Hey everybody, how are you guys doing today? Uh, you're gonna have to let me know if the music is too loud on this because I'm gonna have it playing the entire time since the original audio from this video is probably gonna be doubled up with my voice, so that would be pretty disastrous. Yeah, let me know if it gets too loud. It's a bunch of different songs. So, uh, Dio, thank you for the Prime sub. I hope you enjoy your remotes. Welcome. Music seems good. Okay, so there's something um, we're going to be doing today, which is uh, how to do a no-hit run on DS1. So, uh, two of the most important questions, I think, right off the bat for this uh, will be, how do you make save states? So if you're on PC, uh, you want save file organizer from speedsouls.com, uh, which will be linked in the, the description of the video. And um, if you're on console, you're gonna wanna take, uh, let's say for example, you have PS4, you wanna take your save file profile and you wanna upload it to the cloud service so that you can take those 10 character profiles on your, on your main profile and reload them at any time. So you're gonna have to run each character to where you want it to be in the game to practice and then make a backup of the save file overall to the cloud service. And then you can keep reloading that and practicing whatever you want. It'll all reset from wherever you are. Uh, and if you have a USB drive on, on console, you can do the same thing and export your save to the USB drive and then take the USB drive on your computer and then export that to a file folder and then you can have infinite amounts of save files for console. So those are the two most important things to know. And then another question that's really good is like, what are the rules? So this is not a zero damage run. We're, we're going to take damage in this run. The goal is to not take damage from any enemy or boss. Uh, with the exception, there's one event that happens that's mandatory. Um, you can skip this event, but it's not counted typically on this kind of run or deathless, uh, where it is developer intended to die uh, when you make it to Seath the first time, which we'll point out when we're, when we're doing the guide. So that's, that's all the information to know. Uh, in terms of the rules, any damage or stagger animation from an enemy inflicted to the character is a hit. Um, you are allowed to take fall damage. You are allowed to get poisoned by water um, or toxic by water. And uh, there's no save quits used in this run. And I'm also not using magic, so that's pretty much the rules. If there's, if there's any other questions, we'll, we'll go over them before we start, I guess. Uh, I'm not going to be reading chat too much while doing this, by the way. This is a run that is taken from the trilogy run that I did with uh, all three games back to back. So it'll be pretty quick, and I'll try to pause and slow down and, and go over things if needed. Uh, do you need to refresh? Is the title wrong? I got to change the title before we start as well. That's one thing we got to do. <laughs> um, let me do that really quick. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So Alright, here we go. The world might be mended. Sweet. Good luck, squeal, squeal hype. Chef, thank you for the 27 months, by the way. Welcome back. Uh, one thing I'm going to do really quickly is uh, turn off the sound for alerts and the visual cues for them so we can just kind of talk about this stuff. And then I'll catch up with all the stuff that I miss later. Alright, so the alerts are turned off. We're going to start this. Um, so, is there any final questions anybody has? Yeah, this, this is going to be a commentary of the run. Leoza. What is this supposed to be? It's supposed to be a guide on how to no-hit the game, basically. Are, are glitches and skips allowed? So, there's no glitches in this at all. Um, any skips that are used are minor. They're not major. Which means that I'm not clipping through any walls. Uh, or duplicating things, or, you know, glitching out of the game, whatever the case. Uh, this will be on YouTube, yeah. How to use inventory while running? Um, so you basically have to use other fingers, uh, which is claw grip, basically. So you're going to be using your thumb on the face buttons and your, and your, um, your index finger on the camera, and then, like, the same kind of thing for the left hand. So your index finger on the running button, and then your thumb on the D-pad, or vice versa if you're on PS4 for the controller, so you need to be able to use like multiple fingers at once. That's something you gotta practice. Anyways, we're gonna get into this. 
So I'm playing on the remastered version. It's the current patch. Uh, we're in offline mode. Um, so the character class we're going to be picking for this run is going to be the warrior. Uh, Master Key. Let me go back. Master Key is actually the uh, the starting gift that we want. Doesn't matter if you pick like a guy or a girl, doesn't make a difference with the hitbox or anything. Uh, now you can pick other characters to start off for this run, but the warrior is just pretty well rounded for the weapons you're going to be getting. And um, uh, the main weapon we're going to be building up to is the Crystal Halberd. I also do believe I grabbed the Giant Blacksmith Hammer in this run too. Uh, and that is good for Seath and for Four Kings. Anything that's weak to Lightning, basically. But, uh, yeah. So, we're just getting started here. We're going to take off all the armor. Um, and eventually we're going to get our first weapon, switch it for the Broken Sword. If you played the game before, obviously, this is pretty basic stuff. Uh, there's nothing that's too difficult in this first part. It's pretty simple. Um, I'll point out a few things as they as they come up. But there may be some parts in this video where it gets very difficult to explain things very quickly. So I'll try to make it as simple as I can for people that don't want complicated stuff. So this is our first weapon. We pick it up right after this guy. Uh, what I prefer to do is put on the longsword in the fog gate so it's safe. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. You could do it after if you wanted to. But you're actually able to put on items while on ladders or opening doors. That counts as a door. Uh, we're going to go up this staircase, kind of dip off of the side of it. It's okay to take fall damage there, because again, this is not a no damage run. It's hitless, so we're only concerned about enemies. Um, so you just fall off the side. Talk, talking to Oscar is quicker than, than killing him to get the uh, Estus Flask, because you can kind of be at the door already. Uh, we kind of maneuver this guy by swiveling around him. So uh, if you want, you can kill that guy. I wait to kill him over here. Um, but if he doesn't chase you, you can continue. Uh, you kind of back away into this open area to get these guys to funnel out. If you go against that wall where the item is for the pyromancer, like the hunter or whatever, where they have the bow or the pyromancy hand, that wall will make them trigger and jump at you. So you can pull them out of that way. Otherwise, they'll get stuck sometimes. And right here, I do a jumping attack on Stray Demon, or Asylum Demon, sorry. Uh, what the jumping attack does is it does more damage than a regular plunge. You have to do a uh, forward R2, like a guard break input, basically. And it's tricky because you might screw up the actual buttons for it. But if you get it down, you can get way more damage. Um, if this doesn't work for you, you could do a regular plunge with R1. And we're trying to get behind him constantly and only do heavy attacks with the uh, with the long sword. If you have a different weapon, let's say you started with like Bandit or something, you could just use the regular attacks. But on this weapon, particularly, the, uh, the R2s work really well. So that's that. It's pretty simple. And uh, again, this is from my trilogy run that I did with all the games. So keep in mind, uh, there might be some pop-ups from alerts and stuff like that. So we're going to pick up these humanities first. The reason that's important is because we need to pop them to increase the luck. Um, and by increasing the luck, what that does is the drop rate of the first item we're going to try to farm will increase, uh, which is purple moss. We need purple moss for Blighttown because of poison. Um, you're allowed to get poisoned in this run, but we like to get the health to a perfect point where we can use RTSR, which is a ring that is coming up later. I'll explain more about that again when we get to those situations. So we drop down the elevator and firelink. This first chest right here um, has some important stuff we need right away. I believe there's some homeward bones in here. Um, and we're going to need those. I'm probably talking to chat or something in the video. So, <laughs> um, In the meantime, uh, Hilt, thank you for the prime sub. I appreciate that. Welcome, dude. So we're going to pick up the items in there. And there's some Lloyd's Talismans in this chest right here. We need those for later on. I'll explain why uh, when we get there. And then I like to just drop off, run around this way. Uh, the next place we're headed is towards Taurus Demon. We're not going to fight Taurus Demon. Uh, we're going to stop off at the Merchant, I believe. Um, and the reason for that is... I think we're actually going to grab some stuff from him. But yeah, we're going to kill these guys. Um, I like to bait them just to see if they do that jump attack. Because the jump attack they have is one of the hardest things with regular enemies. Like that attack right there. Uh, it has a few different speeds and, and distances it can go. It can go really far. So always expect them to jump at you. Uh, this is a pretty aggressive way of, of doing this. But I'm still making sure they're dead. You could run through here every single time if you wanted to. It's, it's pretty tricky. 
but if you're like a speedrunner, you could definitely just run through here. And I kill them with the R2. Uh, it's a one-shot. And uh, this guy on the stairs, sometimes he jumps from the top, so you just want to back away just in case. Like right here, he jumps from the bottom. You always want to expect that they'll jump first. And uh, you'll probably find that they're one of the most annoying enemies in this entire game to deal with just because of that attack. Now, in this situation, uh, we have this ledge right here that we're uh, kind of hiding behind, waiting for this guy to approach the staircase. Sometimes he jumps over the ledge and onto your head, so you gotta back up pretty far if he's gonna jump that, that distance. And then you can run past these guys, you can kill them if you want to, whatever you find comfortable. Uh, some of the stuff you're gonna have to kind of practice yourself. Uh, I hide behind here to not get staggered by this, uh, this Hellkite Drake. And then we're going to be looking out for the jump attacks on these guys as we're running through. You gotta get ready to roll if they jump at you. That's a really hard situation there. Um, but you just gotta keep your eye on them. And then we break those boxes. Uh, the guys with the spears will not hit you if you're quick. We're gonna buy extra Lloyd's Talismans from the merchant. I believe you want seven in total. So we already had four, we pick up three from him. Let's go back again and look at that. So we buy three and then we buy the, uh, the reinforced club is what we're gonna be using as well. Now that's an optional thing. Reinforced club's really good for stagger on gargoyles. Pretty good on quail egg as well. Um, we already have to buy the talismans, so we just get that item while we're there. It's pretty convenient. So three Lloyd's talismans, one reinforced club. Homeward bone back to Firelink. Uh, now we're headed to Andre, I believe. And uh, there's going to be some item management things we do on the way over uh, to save time because there's going to be scenarios where you don't have to do anything but wait. For example, like a lift, opening a door, things like that. Pulling a lever, waiting for a lift. So we're going to pop all these humanities right here. We had the one we started with, then we have the extra three we picked up. That's four in total. That's how many you should have on the character at this point. Uh, and with those four humanities, again, it's going to increase the item discovery for the purple moss that we need. Um, sometimes you have to farm it for a while. Uh, we're going to be picking up some souls as well. That one right there beside the stairs is important. Uh, because this is going to get us our budget for the weapon setup in the very beginning. And uh, you, you want, you're going to want to grab a few different ones. So this is the second one we grab behind this door. Uh, coming up after this bridge, there is an undead dragon that has another soul. Uh, I believe it's right beside its left hand, so you're going to want to pick that one up. You don't want to pick up the other items because it'll wake it up. Uh, so to keep it asleep, just pick up the one on the far side of it. And then keep running. And then, um, so Red Tearstone Ring is something I should probably explain right now. We're going to be getting this ring pretty soon. Uh, this ring is really good. It's the best item in the entire run, by far. Uh, it gives us 50% damage when we have our health at a very low amount. So we're going to be intentionally taking environmental damage by falling or getting poisoned to get into that range. That's part of the reason I want the Poison Moss for Quail Egg to set up the health perfectly. So this guy, we usually just dodge him on the left. Uh, he'll sometimes attack you really precisely, so you kind of got to iframe through his attack. But right there, he was a little off. Uh, so always just roll to the left on that. And we're going to be hitting this bonfire in this cave. Uh, so we can safely warp back to it after we get the Red Tear Stone Ring. Um, some of the strats in this run are a little slower and a little safer because I'm doing the trilogy run, which means my consistency has to be like very, very high to be able to know that I'm always going to run through DS1 perfectly and then make it to the next game. So there are more aggressive strats you could take here. Like you could grab the ring and then just run back. It's a little risky though, because if you don't recover the fall from the tower that it's on, uh, you'll just get killed. So uh, be to eliminate the chances of that ruining the run, we just get the bonfire here to be safe. We warp back. It takes like an extra bit of time. Um, but it's not a big deal. Uh, the reason it would be quicker doing it the other way is you could warp back to Firelink because that would be the last bonfire you had um, and then go straight to Quail Egg from there and that's even quicker when we're on that boss. So we're going to go back down this lift here. I pop the rest of the souls I have when I'm on the lift going up to get the bonfire so you'll see that I have none left in the inventory. So we're using all those opportunities to consume the souls. And I'm mentioning that just so you guys don't miss it because you might wonder why they're gone. 
and that's pretty much that uh, this bridge right here is really tricky sometimes you will reset trying to get this ring here and there um, because it's a lot of enemies and you're kind of just maneuvering them so I try to go on the on the right side of the bridge then hook around the left for this guy and then I go slightly more to the left here you'll see I slow down and then I speed up this guy on the left will attack at different timings, but you really just want to get some sort of arc to get to the ladder really quickly. You might have to, to roll some of their attacks, um, and they might get you and trap you at certain points, but this is uh, this is one of the points where you might reset a little bit just to get this ring. Uh, that's the best I can explain it. You might need to practice. So you grab Red Tear Stone Ring, you Homeward Bone. I uh, also want to say, Lockie, thank you for the 11 months, man. Welcome back. I appreciate it. I'm going to try to read out the alerts from people subbing on this commentary stream in between. I know I can't really read chat too much. So right here, I'm actually setting up a situation where I can calculate my fall damage. Uh, you don't have to do this, but what I, what I do is I, I pull the lever and then I parry with my bare hand. And you'll see, um, I will do a full bar of stamina and then I'll wait for it to come back and I'll do one extra and I'll run just jogging speed and I'll walk off into the the platform as it's coming up that takes away exactly half my health uh give or take this this might change a little bit depending on your timing because you could be off by like frames that's why I said you don't have to do this this way but you can still use the lift to generally set it up and the reason we want red tier stone ring is we're going to be using it in every uh, area coming up for the next bit so I do it again that's three parries four parries five six seven eight nine I think I kind of just get like freestyle with this here. So yeah, I took a little bit less fall damage. Um, the reason that it's good to use some sort of measurement like this is because you can't actually see the lift until a certain point. And at the point you can see it, when you can drop down, um, it's not going to be enough fall damage to really be quick, right? So ideally you can do this in two drops. I'm playing it a bit safer. I'm doing more parries. I'm doing it in like three drops, I believe. But you can play around with it, find the perfect amount of fall damage you need. Um, the idea is like after you parry, you just jog right over to this part right here and you'll take the fall damage. So right here is perfect. That's three drops. As long as you get that first big one, you can get two small drops and set it up pretty easily. But you don't want to guess because uh, you'll die. <laughs> so now we have red tear stone mode. That's 50% extra damage. Uh, this black knight right here, we're going to try to kill with backstabs uh, just purely by damaging him. So whenever he does an attack and he goes to this wall right here, he has to back up and he can't do anything for a handful of, of seconds. So this is the chance where you have to kind of just circle around him and get backstabs. And you can get another one right here while he's getting back up if you're very sneaky. Now, if you're not good at getting backstabs, just do one and then repeat it over and over. But if you're if you're really quick, you could get two every single time he does this. And you just have to make sure he's backing up from the fog or the, sorry, the cave door. And you're pretty safe. Um, and that's it. So he dies. Uh, we get the Grass Crest shield right here. This is going to be the shield we use for the entire game. Uh, the reason we use this shield is because it gives us stamina bonus. Um, like the regen, uh, it replenishes faster. And then we use it to parry Gwyn and uh, I think one other enemy or a couple other enemies. Uh, there's one other soul that's off right here in this little valley. Uh, that one's a pretty big one, and the reason that, again, these are important is because we're going to be popping all of these to increase the budget for setting up this weapon we just bought, this reinforced club. And uh, when we do that, we're going to be able to upgrade it fully. Or almost fully. Um, it should be at least plus four or five. And that's good enough to do the first uh, couple bosses, which are going to be Gargoyles followed by Quelag. Uh, right here, there's a ledge where you're going to get the hunter's gear. Uh, the hunter's gear is important because you do need a bow for this run if you want to make it a little bit safer. So we're really just picking this up for the uh, the long bow and the arrows. That's it. And then just fall safely back down there so you don't die. Um, now, at the top of this hill, there's going to be a lot of these uh, these tree enemies that we're going to try to farm for purple moss. This, this lizard's important too. So kill that lizard, get the twinkling titanite. That's going to upgrade the giant blacksmith hammer later on. And then we're just heading over to those tree guys, trying to get the uh, the purple moss to drop. Uh, sometimes this can take a really long time. And um, you might actually have to just straight up set up Red Tear Stone Ring again and hit a bonfire, go back. 
but usually within at least like a few of them you get the purple moss if you have to hit a bonfire you could hit the one on the far end of the forest like down the other way that i um could have turned like the right path so straight ahead from where i am right now but i got it first try and we're good if you have to set up red tear stone ring again you can use the the uh the cliffs or the the, the hills that i ran up to get to this part or you can use the lift again and just figure out a way to, to get the perfect amount of fall damage. Uh, this guy we just run on the far left wall for. Uh, sometimes when you enter this room, he'll just zap you right away. So be on the lookout for that. If he does the projectile attack. Uh, so here on Andre, we're going to pop our last soul. This should put our balance at about uh, 7,300. 7, so if you're at over 7,000, that's pretty much what you want. That means you did it right. Uh, we're going to purchase some things from Andre. We're going to want some Titanite. So to upgrade this weapon fully, you need 9 Titanite. Uh, also, Waffle, thank you for the Prime sub. I appreciate that. Welcome, dude. So you can see right here, we, we're going to get uh, as much Titanite as we can. And it's 200 every single time you upgrade the weapon. So just make sure you have enough for uh, the plus 5, which is 9 shards. And then you have another thousand souls at least left over to upgrade the weapon to plus five. And you're good. If you can't do that, plus four will work. It's fine. It's just a little harder. Um, so right here, I'm probably just kind of like fumbling around or something. I don't know what I'm doing. Am I buying some arrows? I'm buying some arrows too. Why am I buying arrows? <laughs> Apparently I bought some arrows and I got the club to plus four okay so 50 arrows and then i got the club to plus four you don't need to do this but for some reason i wanted arrows i don't know why i guess we'll figure it out so we're gonna light this bonfire we're gonna sit at it uh we're upgrading our decks to 14 so we can use the bow because the warrior class doesn't have enough stats to use the bow by default And again, I am I am reading chat and playing at the same time while doing this, so I might do some weird things in the run. This isn't recorded for the purpose of the guide. This was a stream that I did, <laughs> so keep in mind. Um, right here, we're going to kill these guys. Wait for that guy to shoot his crossbow bolt, or if he doesn't, just attack him right away. Uh, and kind of dip into that corner for this guy right here. This one, you can bait out a long range attack, so he'll just stab. You can interrupt it, or you can back away. Um, they're pretty simple to kill. This big dude right here, uh, I usually just bait out attacks, make sure he doesn't um, follow up, and then go in for the kill. So on this slam right here, he might do another, that's why I kind of circle back in. The very slow slam, he can never follow up, that's 100% safe to punish. And then these swipes, he can follow up, like you see right here. Sometimes he won't, but you want to make sure he does two. If he doesn't do two, don't go for it if you want to be safe. Uh, if he's chugging Estus, hit him. You will probably kill him. So he gives you another shard right there too. Um, and that's gonna, I guess, play into me upgrading to plus five. It'll save me a little bit of, uh, of souls purchasing another shard. So I only need two this time. That final upgrade. And we're gonna get on this lift right here. Gonna put on the arrow, arrows with the bow. And um, so what the plan is right here is we're setting up Red Tear Stone Ring. The reason we wanted the arrows, I just remembered, uh, we're going to be shooting this Balder Knight with arrows. I believe. Um, actually, we might we might throw fire bombs at him. Because I made a new strategy for this part. I'm not sure if I knew how to do it at this point. So we're using the lift to set up Red Tear Stone Ring. Uh, you just fall off of it a couple times, a few times maybe. Um, if, you, if you fall from the maximum height that it lets you, uh, and then you fall from a shorter height, you should be able to get the, the health to set it up. But just kind of screw around with that, you should be able to figure it out. And then we're going right back up again. And we're, we're going to kill the, uh, the Balder Knight. So let me see, do I use the fire bombs here or not? No, I'm shooting him with an arrow in the head still. So that does a little bit of damage, and then we're gonna run away. And this is the utmost safest way you can possibly do this. The way I do this now is not as safe. I'm kind of just baiting him, trying to shoot him as I'm walking back, but this is like 
the last ditch effort you can do with this guy. You bring him all the way to an area where he has to back out of the, uh, the zone, and then you can hit him when he's backing up because he's not actually able to attack. Right here, I might get the shot on him, uh, which didn't kill him because he's healing, so he's being kind of a jerk. We're going to pull out our regular weapon again, and we're going to wait in this doorway. Sometimes he'll chase you all the way down to Andre, so kind of just be careful of that. Oh, he apparently we didn't pull out a regular weapon, so there's two options here. You can shoot him with the arrows if he's backing up like that and he's not blocking, but if he goes to the door, wait for him to back through the doorway and then just run up and hit him with the club really quickly, and that's a one-shot kill. That's easy. Uh, from here, we're going to go back. We're going to get that plus five upgrade for the weapon. And then that would cost three shards in total. We already had one, so we bought two more, and that's plus five on the club. Now, again, if you wanted to do that whole thing and not have the arrows in the beginning, you could just throw a firebomb at that Baldur Knight, or just, or just get him to chase you, literally, and just do the same thing. You don't have to buy any of the arrows. You can get plus five right away. Don't have to make another trip. I think that's better, but again, I was playing it super safe here. And I also didn't know how to kill him with firebombs yet. Um, if I make a guide for the zero damage version of this run, I will include the strats of how to do that as well. Uh, but for now, this should be pretty damn good. So we're going to run all the way up here. And um, in this hallway here, there's a guy that will jump around the corner and hit you as soon as you pop up in this doorway that's coming up. So what you want to do is, is just imagine he's going to hit you the second you actually hit that doorway and then roll back. So here we got lucky. They started moving before we even reached the doorway. If you're inside, inside it, though, um, there's a chance you'll just blindly be hit like around the corner of the wall. So just roll like right out of it immediately as soon as you touch it. And um, if they don't start chasing you, just keep doing that. Keep going in the doorway and rolling back out immediately to bait them. And once they start chasing you, they have a really long tether range, which means they can they can sense you from really far away, and they will all just funnel through here. Um, now I'm backing up with the bow. I have the arrows to shoot these guys in this run. There's another strategy you can use to kill them. It's a little bit uh, a little bit better. Um, there's also other ways to do it without killing them as well that I prefer. But if you want to be super super safe. This is, this is like a no-brainer. You just sit with the bow, you shoot them. It takes a little bit longer, but then they're all dead. And there's nothing that can go wrong. So again, this is like an older strap, but it's super consistent though. That's the reason I'm using it. And you should be counting 10 of these guys. So uh, when they die, if you've lost track of how many, you can count their bodies. And that gives you a rough idea of how many are left. There's 10 in total, I believe. Um, sometimes they'll get stuck in the staircase area where you can't even see them. You'll be able to hear them. Um, or you'll just know there's some left because there's not as many bodies. And just be careful that when you turn a corner, they're not right there because they can be stuck on the Chandler. Right here, you see the situation like that. So we'll shoot the Chandler first. Uh, th firebomb would be really good right here because it would kill the hollows through the Chandler. So I should be using a firebomb here if I have one. Uh, and then we shoot these guys. This one... Jumps at me, I, I back up. Gonna make some more space. Let's and that is that. So the world might be mended. Uh, now we should be safe to go to Gargoyles. So the world might be mended. Uh, Niall, thank you for the two months. Welcome back, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. So one thing to mention with um, gargoyles, uh, you're you're opting to get a tail cut on them, or you're opting to stagger them. One of the two. You can combine both the methods if you want to. It's that's even better. Uh, every time you hit the gargoyles twice, three and four's club, they will stagger. Now you want to make sure you have enough stamina after the stagger to continue to do something if you need to get out of the way. And there are some attacks that are pretty tricky on this fight that I'll try to pause if we see. If we don't see them, you might have to look at some other examples of of runs that I've done on DS1. The damageless run that I just completed with all the bosses would probably be a good example because it's a longer fight. So we bait him over to this wall. The reason we're baiting him over here is because when the second gargoyle comes in, he'll have a longer amount of distance to travel to get to you so it's even safer time-wise. Just gives you a better time frame to deal with. Uh, the thing you're trying to avoid on this, the number one thing, is you don't want to fight both of them at once. I can explain what to do if, if that is the case, which just revolves around waiting for good attacks while the other one's doing fire typically but you don't want that. So we bait him over here, we hit him once. We didn't get the stagger because he jumped back. 
Uh, they do jump back quite a bit. They have iframes on the on the dodges, so you won't be able to hit them when they do that. I hit him with an R2 here. I didn't have to do that. I could have just hit him one more time and he would have staggered. But here, because he's being silly and just flying and not attacking, he's already dead. That's a really easy example of how that's going to go. You just really want to hit him twice and get the stagger. And then be patient, wait out another attack, repeat. If you have enough stamina, you could always like load up two staggers back to back and interrupt him. The second gargoyle should die in two hits. So on this run, this, this fight is really easy if you are getting decent RNG and keeping in mind that you're using red tier stone ring with the 50% damage bonus. Again, if you want an example of, of harder versions of all the fights that are in this run, I will link um, a direct uh, thing to the latest run that I did on this game, which is zero damage all bosses plus DLC. That has much harder versions of the fights because I can't use red tier stone ring on it. And uh, maybe some RNG that you haven't seen before, but I just I just look through as many things as you can if you want other examples. Uh, and I'm sure that fight will become pretty easy pretty quickly for you. Uh, the tail cut is mainly just revolving around getting on the right angle. And once you get the tail cut, you're guaranteed two more hits after that safely. So always try to go for the tail cut first if you can and try to aim it, aim it so they go flying into the wall far away from where the other one pops up. Here we're going to ring the bell. Um, so this guy at the bottom right here, I believe it's Oswald of Kareem, he's going to give us some Homeward Bones. And now, if you have about three or four Homeward Bones left over at this point, you should be good enough to not get more, but I would recommend getting them anyways if you're learning the run. So I buy five from them. Now, I may not use all those in this run, but we can, we can look through it and see at the end how many I actually do use. I have nine total. We're going to Homeward Bone out of here. And then the next step is to go to Quail Egg. So from Andre, we're running back through Firelink, and we are going to Quail Egg. Uh, this area is pretty safe to run through. So you should be good getting to the lift again. There shouldn't be anything you need to do. So yeah, these guys, they'll try to catch up. They won't make it to you. They're, they're pretty slow. As long as you're quick getting to this lift. Uh, and when we arrive in Firelink, there's one thing we're going to want to do. So uh, because we did Gargoyles first and we rung the bell um, in the in that church rather than in Blighttown. Uh, so Lotrek is going to be in Firelink. And we're going to kill Lotrek by kicking him off the ledge. And we're going to take his humanity because his humanity is going to be used to open a shortcut later on in the game. We need 30 humanity by the end of the game. So this is a big part of it. Uh, he also gives us a ring that's pretty good too. You don't need to use it. There is one use of it later on that I could point out, but um, for now we're just going to kill him for his humanities. Because there's no save quits in this run, we're just going to continue, and we'll come back later on and pick up his items, because they'll just be there when we reach this part again. Uh, if you are allowing save quits in your run, you can save quit right here, pick them up immediately, and you'll be good. But we have to go to Four Kings this exact same pathway anyways, so we're just going to get on the way to Four Kings. Uh, now here, I'm just kind of checking my inventory to make sure there's no souls to pop. Alright, so for Blighttown, um, I think the, the best way to explain this intro part is just kind of be on the lookout for these, uh, these ogres, uh, they'll try to swing at you with the large club. There is a faster attack they'll do that will connect most of the time if you're not quick. But sometimes they're very slow too, so just kind of pay attention to what attack they're doing. Um, try to keep some space if you can. Like that guy was kind of slow, the other one was uh, delayed. This guy, what's he going to do? He's pretty slow too. But be on the lookout for quicker attacks from them because they will swing pretty quickly. Uh, here, there's going to be a series of ladders that we have to go down. Some of them we're going to skip completely, though, so we're going to go down this one. I'm going to drop off the second one right here. Um, we should be able to drop off this one, if we're careful. Roll immediately to the side, skip that as well, and then roll right down here into the wall so we don't roll off the edge or just kind of like diagonally, and then we're going to hit the platform immediately if we can. Um, if the platform is too far down, you should wait for it because you don't want to fall and die. There is a mosquito that pops up as well that you got to look out for that will uh, try to shoot you with... Um, 
like some sort of spray. Um, so if you're waiting too long, watch out for the mosquito and try to just kind of walk around it. Uh, you're gonna fall right down here. We already have a lot of health loss, if you could see that. So we get poisoned right here. And uh, with this much health remaining, or roughly in that range, and the poison combined, we're just waiting out our health to get to a point where Red Tear Stone Ring's activated. You'll see the character glow once uh, it's active. As a reminder, um, and this might vary. So if you had a lot more health falling down than I did, or you did something different, like you might have to wait longer. But this way, because we have the purple moss, we can uh, have our damage right at the beginning of the fight and not have to wait for anything else. So, um, There is an alternative method you could have for this. You could literally just not have the purple moss. You could do Quayleg without our TSR, and then you could set it up in the fight with the poison by healing properly, but you'd have to time exactly how the poison would be for the remaining timer to get your health to that point. So that's, you'd have to figure that out on your own. Um, for Quayleg, the strategy is mainly just trying to hit her legs uh, and not get stuck underneath her front legs when she jumps because she'll kind of pull you with her and then land on you. You don't want her to land on you with any kind of jump at all. Uh, there's also a long range jump that's an attack. Uh, for that, you want to roll underneath her. If you're close enough, uh, if you're far away, it's not worth actually committing running towards her because the lava will get you, so you're going to want to run backwards. She sometimes does the jump on an intro attack. Right here, she doesn't. Uh, and there's two main attacks that you're you're trying to bait, which is uh, the leg slams and then like the large lava attacks. These small ones I go for sometimes still. I check to see if she rotates first though and that she doesn't jump. And this big attack right here is one of our best opportunities. So we're going to go in for uh, some attacks on this. And always kind of just be aware of like where the lava is and everything like that. Um, there's situations where the lava will land on a hill and it'll extend the hitbox of it. So you, you don't actually have to touch it to get hit. Um, but yeah, this fight's pretty simple. You want to run around her every single time she does that to see if she'll rotate. And then you can punish the rotation with a jump attack. That's a really good method to kill her quickly. Um, here again, she does like the really, really good attack that takes a long time. So we just kind of sit over by this leg right here. You don't want to be directly behind her because there's another attack she'll do with her butt that's very dangerous. Um, it's kind of hard to expect sometimes. So don't actually hit her back completely. Just maybe one of the, the legs that are further back or on the side. Um, and yeah, we're just kind of trying to run away and bait out attacks. It's the idea. Uh, there is a longer one she does where she pokes with the sword, and that has the most range uh, with, with her sword, so you're going to want to, uh, if you don't have the, the distance to dodge it, and you're, you're, you have to do it close range, roll to the right if you can, because it's a little bit more dominant on the left side. You can even run to the right if you need to, or like tuck underneath her arm. This one right here, or you can just run away, if you already have the space. So here she does the big attack again. Pretty simple, it's not that hard of a boss. Um, not too bad at all. This is the AOE explosion, so you're gonna wanna run away from that. As soon as you see her kinda curl inwards, you don't wanna be close. Um, and after that, typically she does do a jump, so you can see right here she's jumping. I back up to make myself have more room to kind of anticipate it, and then I roll underneath her. On slants though, if you're on a ledge, and she's at the bottom of the ledge, she'll always hit you no matter what. You need to be on level ground. That's why I ran across the slope, not like down the slope. Same thing with up the slope too. You want to be across it or on flat ground because um, she will. You, you won't be able to clear her uh, her body. And always expect she's going to jump after that big explosion attack when you run back because you usually have to get far away to do it. So here we're going to heal up before we go down because we don't want to take fall damage or die or anything. Going to pull the lever. Uh, so now that we've rang both bells, the gate for Sense Fortress will be open, which is the next area after this. But before we head over there, we're going to go kill uh, Ceaseless Discharge. That is the easiest boss in this run. There is almost no way you can screw this up as long as you're paying attention. It's it's just so easy. It's literally like you could probably do it with your eyes closed if you were uh, practiced enough. And the goal with Ceaseless Discharge is to keep an even distance from him. And what he'll do is he'll jump. And uh, when he does this jump attack, he'll grab onto the ledge. He'll have no more room to walk because he's jumped off of the ground that he was on. And now he's hanging over a cliff. And then as soon as you loosen his grip, you I think you hit him six times, he dies. It's pretty easy. Um, there is a trick to it, though. So you want to make sure that you do it on the first attempt. You don't want to screw anything up. You want to do it on the first attempt. There's a way to do it on the second attempt or third if he's already woken up, but you're going to have to deal with other attacks that might kill you before getting all the way over to the back of the arena. And um, the fight typically starts when you grab the armor, as most people know. So 
as soon as you get this armor, you'll, you'll see I'll start running and I'll, I'll take the back pathway and uh, I'll just keep going as quick as I can, keeping a really good distance between them and getting all the way to the fog gate. Again, for anyone watching in chat, um, if you have any questions before this fight's over, let me know. Because uh, I can't read chat too much while doing this, but if you have any quick questions, this is a perfect time for them. So we're waiting for this initial attack right here to stop, for that fire to fall, and then we're just going to keep running the entire time. Uh, there's no game sound, LEOB. This is a run I've already streamed before, so my commentary's already on here. Didn't want to double up on the commentary. <laughs> I'm not actually playing the game. We were commentating a previous run. Any plans on doing something similar to this for DS and Sekiro games? Oh yeah, of course. I, I, I'm going to make guides for everything. All right, so now we're at the fog gate. Uh, you want to be in the middle of the fog gate. When he slams here, there's a mistake I make on this run. I don't roll when he slams. Now, it's very unlikely you will actually get hit and killed when he does this, because it's just like, it's very odd. You want to roll, though, when he slams, just in case. And you want to be in the middle of the fog gate, not in the corner. So you're going to punch him, or you're going to hit him with your weapon as many times as it takes from the fall. He'll die to gravity. This is a developer-intended way to kill him. It's kind of like an Easter egg. Uh, very easy. And then we homeward bone back right after. We pop the soul that we had from Quayleg to get more um, more souls to level up. And then what we're doing here is we're leveling our strength to 23. So really quickly for anyone that's watching, I know that these menu screens are really quick. So I'm going to pause and you can see that's the stats that we should have right after Quayleg and a ceaseless discharge. Total level 15, 23 strength. Everything else as it was before. We're running down here. We're gonna buy the crest from Andre to open the door to uh, Darkroot Forest. That's gonna help us get to Sif later. But in the meantime, there is an item we need in there. Uh, before we head over there, we buy six shards for the bow to upgrade the bow a little bit more. Because um, the bow is going to be pretty handy in this run. We're gonna be using it for the whole thing. Um, and here, let's see, what are we doing? I'm going to buy some more arrows as well. Now, when it comes to like arrow quantities and upgrading the bow, you can do this at your own pace. You don't have to follow me exactly, but there are going to be parts where the bow being upgraded helps you quite a lot. So keep that in mind. Um, there might be some mistakes I make in this run where I route it a little bit weirdly or I, 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 I screw up the strats and then we do things in different orders. But I think this is OK right now. Let's see. See, so yeah, we're going to be re reinforcing the longbow for plus four upgrades. Okay. Oh, here we go. We're going to get plus five on the bow. And we already have the crest because we had 40,000 souls before Andre. So we spent the 40,000 or a bulk amount of it on the crest. We got the weapon smith box as well. The weapon smith box, you need to upgrade the blacksmith hammer yourself. And the crystal halberd, you want that item. It's very important. Make sure before you kill the giant blacksmith that at least you have bought the weapon smith box. If you didn't buy it on Andre, buy it in Anor Orlando. Uh, these guys were just going to kind of like bait out their attacks, try to kill them. They have a crazy range, and if you roll straight into them, their attack actually lingers, so it still hits you even if you've already cleared it. So you want to space it completely and not just iframe it like right into their body. So they'll go for like a lunge right there. Um, I do the jump attacks sometimes. It's a little, it's a little iffy, but uh, yeah, I think I might be setting up Red Tier Stone Ring again on this part. I think that's what the plan is. So we're going to be coming over to this cliff and falling off of it to get some more damage here. Now on this part, it's pretty slippery when you do this, so watch out. Um, be very, very careful on how much fall damage you're actually taking. I'm using this rock as a marker. I'm just going a little bit past the rock right there. And you can see I'm taking even chunks of damage right here.
And one more of those should get us where we need to be. So I think right here I'm debating on doing a different setup. So I'm going to fall a little bit closer to the rock. You can see that, right? There we go. Perfect. So use that rock as a marker if you want. Should be a handful of drops, and then the last one's a little bit shallower, and you're you're good. Um, so one thing we're on the way to doing right now that's very important for this run is getting another ring that's super super essential. So I would say uh, I recommend getting the darkwood grain ring if you can. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a ring that Shiva's bodyguard. He, he's an NPC. Uh, his bodyguard will drop this ring to you when you kill him. There's a very easy way to kill him that's, that you're going to see coming up, and this ring will allow you to have better rolls. So your roll will be farther distance, it'll be quicker um, recovery time, and you'll have slightly more iframes as well. Which just means you'll be way cooler and acrobatic. And you actually will use the animation for this roll for other things than just dodging attacks as well. Sometimes it makes good space. Uh, or helps, um, you know, escape a situation quicker than running, so it's it's really good. Um, though at the cost of more stamina, of course, so you're going to be able to roll less, but way more effectively. Um, if you want to do this run without that ring, super big props to you. That's cool. You don't you don't have to, but it's it's just recommended. Uh, and here is where we're going to use the crest. Now, with this Covenant coming up, they're going to be uh, not nice to you off the bat. So you're going to want to go and join the Covenant to become friends with them. And then you're going to betray the Covenant to get the ring. All within a good minute or so. Um, I believe here, because I didn't hit the bonfire right outside the door, I'm going to have to run back when I do this. So we might see a pretty big run back on this part, which in that case, I'll just kind of fast forward through it because you've already seen me go through that area before and it's not as important, but I would actually recommend hitting that bonfire that was right beside the door to the left, the hidden one. And then you can just appear back here and then run back to Andre after when you're on your way to uh, uh, Iron Golem. So we've joined the Covenant. Um, I walk away, I believe, before getting the Cat Ring so it doesn't go in my inventory because the Cat Ring looks really similar to another ring that we're going to get later, and it can get confusing and screw up the run a little bit, so I just walk away as soon as it says that. Um... So right here, this is Shiva with the curved sword that we're looking at. And then his bodyguard's the guy that's slightly invisible behind him. We're kicking Shiva away from his bodyguard so that when we uh, kill his bodyguard, he can't get to us as soon. Now, this isn't necessarily always something that you need to do. But with the way I'm going to do it on this run, we're, we're going to want both these guys to be kicked away. Now, kicking is pretty tricky. This is one of the hardest things that you, you can you can do as like a mechanic in the game. Um, you're going to have to practice kicking just somewhere open where you're not going to interfere with NPCs or piss them off because uh, if you punch them too many times or hit them, you could screw up the run. And this guy, I'm trying to actually kick him on an angle where he rotates. So I'm kicking his, uh, his far leg so he'll spin. I'm trying to get the angle for it. So now he's facing completely the other way. He can't even look at me if he wanted to. Uh, they're far enough away where they won't walk back, but they're like kind of on that boundary where they're they're away from their default spot. Because eventually, if you kick them enough, they will actually walk back to their default spot. So keep that in mind. Um, right here, I have the club plus five again with the twenty. I believe it was twenty three strength. Um, I have red tear stone ring, and we're gonna stagger this guy and just kill him. So you can kick him off alternatively, but this is a way to do this all in one go, and then you homeward bone, bone back. So. Before, when I thought that I had gotten the wrong bonfire, this is actually a different way to do this that's even better if you're able to do it. So you only make one trip. And I'm setting up the position. I hit him three times, he dies with Red Tear Stone Ring, plus five club, 23 strength. Pick up the item, they're too far away to see because they've been pushed out of their range to look at me, and now I can just warp back. Really good strat. Um, if this doesn't work, use the strat where you kick him off the ledge. It's in a lot of other runs I've done. It'll be in the run where I've recommended uh, in the video the, the zero damage run that I recently did as well. So now we're back over at Andre. We can run right to Iron Golem. We have the flip ring. We put it on. Never seen it done that way, Hanski. Yeah, there's a lot of people that haven't seen that before. I, I don't do it that way in any other run, I don't believe. But it's a cool way to show that off, I guess. So here we're going to be um, entering Sense Fortress, waiting for this first snake to uh, 
walk towards us. If you're very quick and really comfortable with the game, you don't have to even do this at all. You can run straight through the middle of them into the doorway right away. Uh, I'm kind of baiting out attacks from him, trying to get him far away, and then I just decide to run right here. So, like, just to pretend I didn't even do that and I just ran through. You can do that. As long as you don't hit that button and get hit by the arrows, you're good. These pendulums will not actually knock you off if you brush against the face of them, only if you're against the edge of them. So you can run into them, and you're fine. Um, this guy... Let me go back really quick. So this guy will do a thrust attack, uh, a head attack with his neck, where he extends his face at you, or he'll do a stab. If you just keep running on the left side of his body, no matter what you do, as long as you're maintaining speed, the hitbox of his attack won't activate at the beginning of the animation for any of his attacks, so he won't hit you at all. He'll only hit you if you wait too long. So if you run immediately, he'll never get you. Uh, you run through here on the timing where this, this Cobra's just hit the lightning against the pendulum, and then you get ready to roll. So you'll see right here, uh, he's on a timer where he's just he's just throwing uh, you know projectiles constantly. As soon as he makes contact, he hits, and you think you can make it through. Get ready to roll the next attack. Sometimes it'll match up where you don't need to roll it at all, and then you use that button to shoot the arrows at him to kill him if you want. We're gonna be running anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, here we wait for this guy to get hit by the ball. This cobra right here, we want to be quick. It will sometimes chase you, so you get in the fog gate immediately. Uh, this part you're gonna you're gonna want to be really fast. So you hit the button, roll through the table, a couple times if you need to. Turn the corner immediately. We're gonna drop down here. We're gonna keep moving because the guy above us could hit us. So we drop off super early, roll down here, turn the corner, uh, and then now this is the point where we're gonna get the item called the symbol of avarice. Symbol of avarice drains your health when you put it on. Uh, we're using it to set up red tier stone ring health range, just anywhere in the map. So we don't have to take fall damage to do that. And um, the way to get this item is on any single Mimic in the game, if you use seven Lloyd's Talismans, it's a guaranteed drop. Or you can use six Lloyd's Talismans, and then you can kill the Mimic and it'll drop the item right after. That's how you get it, if you want it guaranteed. So we're waking it up, and then we're throwing a Talisman, putting it back to sleep, grabbing um, the item that it de comes with by default just to get it out of the way, and then we're checking to see if it also dropped the Symbol of Avarice as well. And uh, this is just a, rep a repetitive cycle of waking him up, putting him to sleep, hitting him, so you can get his health down and get ready to kill him when you're already, you know, when you're ready to finish him off and you got the item and everything. Sometimes he'll stretch and he'll block you, so you have to go around the long way. This is a tight space. Keep that in mind. Um, when throwing the talisman, too, be really careful, because sometimes you can actually, even if it's locked on, it can miss his body. So you're going to have to get used to the timing of when you want to throw it. Uh, in terms of how he gets up off the ground. So right when he's almost getting up, I throw it. You see how early that is. And then he doesn't have a chance to move. And uh, being behind him, I feel works pretty good too. So I'm just I'm throwing in like an R1 attack in between all these, these cycles. Um, and eventually I'll get the item. Now for your run, if you can figure out a way to get Red Tier Stone set up on fall damage everywhere in the game, wherever you need it, you don't really need to get this item at all. This is just really convenient. And um, as it isn't an enemy attack or a stagger, it's not counted as a hit. It's just the same thing as environmental damage, so you're fine. And you see I've killed the Mimic. And I screwed up on this run because I didn't use enough talismans, so I didn't get the item I needed. I was probably distracted by chatter just like talking about something. This happens a lot. And I've screwed it up. So now you're going to see the backup plan where if you screw up that situation and you still need the item... Uh, you don't have to worry, there's still another way to get it right after this part of the game. But that means for this area, we're going to be doing less damage. So we're going to have to figure out a way to either get Red Tear Stone Ring set up inside Sense Fortress, or we're going to do it without any Red Tear Stone. Oh wait, did I get the symbol? Wait, chat's saying I got the symbol. Did I get it? I picked it up early, didn't I? Wait, let me, let me see. No, I got it. Okay, never mind. Sorry, okay. That's not going to be cut out of the video, but just keep in mind, okay, apparently I got it. <laughs> Apparently I got it, we're good. Anyway, so yeah, we got it. Sometimes it'll drop early as well, but if you don't get it and you still have talismans left and you've screwed up and you've killed the thing too early, uh, there's another mimic that's in Anor Orlando at the beginning that you can use more Lloyd's talismans on and uh, guarantee the uh, the item drop with the remaining ones that you have. So if you've used, let, let's say you've used like five of them like I did, the remaining two that you use on the next mimic should make it drop no matter what. That's it. So keep that in mind. Apparently I did get the drop for it. Just picked it up early. Um, so right here we just run through these pendulums pretty easy. Uh, we're not killing any enemies. We're keeping our speed and we're going to hit this guy out of the way. 
to make room right here and then turn the corner as quick as we can. We're waiting for these pendulums to match up together like that and we're running straight through. If they don't match up right away, you can always go in between them and wait. Um, it's a little safer than waiting in front of them because then the guy that shoots lightning from behind that you just saw almost get me there, he won't be able to hit you as easily because he'll be blocked. But ideally, if you have good timing running through the area, you should be able to match up with it when they're all facing in the middle. And then you can just kind of brush against that first one and run right through. It's pretty, it's scary. It looks scary, but it's almost, it's honestly so much easier than taking more time. Uh, here we're going to jump across this uh, little boundary here. If you fall down, um, what I like to do is wait at least 10, 15 seconds before going back up so the, the golem can throw his explosive things. So you kind of walk back up to where the platform is, where those items are uh, below that area to the, uh, the right of this bridge. And then you wait for him to throw another bomb and explode. And then you can go right after and you know it's safe so you won't get hit on the way. Here from this merchant, uh, we're going to purchase some black fire bombs to kill the, the giant. That's going to give us the giant blacksmith hammer. So I buy 12 of those. And that's all we need. Uh, this part right here, there's a guy out the doorway that's invisible because he's so far away the game can't load his character model into the game when you're inside this building. But his arrows will still shoot and they'll hit the ground, so you can see two of them right there. If you turn this corner without looking to see if he's actually shooting you, you'll get hit sometimes. Uh, but you won't be able to see him in the game, so make sure that you uh, expect there's going to be arrows hitting the, front, the, the, the ground right outside this. I like to wait some extra time until he's done shooting. And then we uh, just progress forward and you'll see him pop in the game later on too so he's not visible right there right now uh, but he's there and you'll, his arrows you'll be able to see but it's it's kind of tricky though so just be careful jump across here and um so that enemy that was invisible is going to be uh, visible now because we're going to be right beside him. So we're going to go around this platform fairly quickly if we can Because there is a giant throwing fire still from above. It's going to explode on you We're going to wait out an arrow from this guy You can roll through it or you can wait further back on the stairs and just walk around it. That's easier in my opinion And then we just run up and kill him hit him twice uh, I'm putting on the symbol of avarice that we picked up right now to set up that red tier stone health range while we're trying to bait this giant to do a big combo move that is going to stagger him and allow us to kill him really easily. Uh, it's kind of like two birds with one stone. Instead of just standing there and waiting for the health to go down, I'm doing it actively while I'm trying to bait this enemy's attack because I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. I'd actually recommend waiting and getting red tier stone before you do this because if he does the attack really early, you won't have as much damage to kill him. So I'm just... I'm aware that there's a greater chance sometimes that he won't do the attack right away so I'm kind of just hoping that he takes his time while I can set this up simultaneously so he just uh, did the attack that we need right there and now he's staggered we're gonna be doing jump attacks on his head so that's just the r2 button with the club and then I follow up with another r2 right here um I think I discovered an even better way to do this is just hit doing one jump attack or one heavy attack and then waiting and then doing another one but we killed him right there we had enough damage. We're gonna grab this Titanite chunk from him as well. That's gonna be good for the Crystal Halberd. It's our first upgrade material for that weapon that we've yet to get, but we're gonna be getting it soon. And then we're just sitting here, we're waiting for our health to get lower. So we have Red Tear Stone activated. Now we're gonna take off that symbol of Avarice, make sure we don't have it on so it doesn't kill us, because that's one way you can ruin the run as well. Uh, at the intro to this fight, he'll usually start off with this projectile attack. You're going to want to roll through it or around it. I like to use these like rocks right here as a reference, so as soon as it's like passing over there, just roll. Sometimes it'll hit the ground too, so you have another chance to be blocked by it. Uh, this attack he did right here is super common. You're going to want to look for this one as much as you can. Uh, where you kind of just walk through his legs when he does it. Back around and then you can hit him and uh, roll away playing it safe you can score two hits per attack on this but i don't do it on this run because i'm playing it super safe uh walk through again on this attack hit his leg again when you can and now he's already uh wobbling and you can see his ankles facing the wall so i couldn't quite knock him off on this one but your goal is essentially to knock this guy off the edge uh, and the way to do that is you see when i walk through uh, and he's turning around here see how he's kind of facing the ledge if, if you let him turn a little more he would have totally fallen off right there 
Um, so you let him turn as much as you can with his back facing to the wall before you hit him every single time if you can, just to make sure that um, you know, you're going to knock him off. And once you get used to the amount of hits it takes to kill him, you can literally, or, or to get him to stagger and wobble off, you can kind of just predict it. So luckily we have enough damage with Red Tear Stone Ring to kill him, even if he gets staggered once, that's pretty easy. Uh, and now we're going to put on the symbol of Avarice again, because another feature of this item is it actually gives us more souls every time we kill something on top of draining the health. So you'll see now our bonus is 48,000 rather than the regular amount of souls, which is in like the 30,000 range. Um, and that's going to help us get more upgrades sooner too. So we're going to be putting that on after boss fights sometimes. Just don't leave it on because you will die. <laughs> As we don't really have much health on this. Uh, now here, there is a bonfire to the left I should be hitting, but I feel like I'm not hitting it just yet for some reason. Maybe I'm skipping it, I don't know. Sometimes I do things in weird orders. So I pull the bow out right here. And we're shooting this uh, these giants to get them out of the way. Now there is actually a better way to do this part, but this is like the ultra safe way to do it, like where there's almost no way to get hit. If you're standing exactly as far away as I am or even further back, as long as you can actually make contact with them and they don't chase you, then you can kill these giants. And the reason I didn't hit the bonfire and now I'm realizing is because I still have Red Tear Stone activated and I don't want to set it up again. So we're using that to our advantage while we have it, and then get, we're going to get rid of it when we sit down later. So that's one giant dead. Uh, you're going to need probably around 100 arrows at this part of the game anyways, so make sure you have the arrows for that. And uh, the goal here is just getting them out of the way so we can approach the Mimic and kill it uh, super quickly. Or I guess we're going to throw a Lloyd's Talisman at it and pick the item out of it that we need, which is the Crystal Halberd. And that is our main weapon for the run. And at this point of the game, uh, the character is fully set up with all the weapons, uh, minus the giant blacksmith hammer. But all the, all the major weapons we're going to be using. So the club is going to be uh, set aside. We're not going to be using it after this. And we're switching over to this right here. And the reason that the that weapon smith box is actually kind of important too is because we can we can upgrade the crystal halberd before ONS at least once with that chunk that we got from the giant. Um, I may do that right here. All right, so we're leveling up again. Uh, our strength was at 23, okay? So we're gonna be putting our endurance to 16 now. Uh, and then I think, oh, apparently, I'm gonna put in a little bit more decks as well. So 25 decks for that Crystal Halberd. 26 decks. Okay, cool. And we're gonna reinforce the Crystal Halberd with one chunk that we have. So now our damage should be pretty good for ONS. Uh, while we're on this lift right here, what I do is just set up the character, I believe. Or, or wait, actually, are we going to? Yeah, I put on the symbol of Avarice. Uh, now, what I'd like to do here to get the health set up very quickly for this next area, you can see on this lift right here, there are things on the wall, these little lines, right? These little sections. So the first line passes, the second line passes. That Once you see the last line right here and you're below the second one, you can fall off safely. And uh, we're going to be medium rolling because this helmet's really heavy. So that's actually okay. It uh, doesn't matter. We're going to jump off the handrail right there, take some more fall damage. And this is taking our health down as we're running. So we can actually just arrive with the amount of health we want pretty quickly. Uh, we're going to run around this corner right here. So the gargoyle doesn't get us. Just keep moving. Don't don't try to roll the attack or anything. Just just run, and you're good. Uh, one thing the medium roll makes a little easier is this part. So when you roll off of this, the medium roll keeps you kind of tight and uh, traveling forward rather than rebounding off the wall and being pushed back. So I I like this better than the flip ring roll to get onto this part. You can also jump. You can also just run, but uh, it just gets you in there really safely. And now we're just waiting for that final amount of health to drain. And now we have Red Tear Stone set up, so we take this off. Uh, this Painting Guardian right here, when it 
um, drops down, I believe, you could just hit it with the club once and it'll die. So you don't need to go to this level of detail to get it, but this is a little safer. So you could shoot it with this arrow, wait for it to come around the corner and hit it in the doorway, or alternatively, you can literally just walk up, let it, let it fall down and hit it once with the club and it's fine. That's what I do nowadays. It's a lot quicker. It's still just as safe if you're if you're practiced on it. And this one I'm shooting through the window here, uh, getting it to come over here. This is like again like super safety. No way he can hit me with even a throwing knife through this wall. So he's gonna have to approach. Uh, when you're trying to wait for these guys to come through the opening, make sure you don't get too close to the wall because they can hit you through it still. And there's a guy on the um, rafters up above where if you if you're running backwards from them because you screwed up something in this later part, don't hide by the window. Because that area is your backup area if you need to push back and kill enemies for in any scenario in this. Don't hide by the window because a throwing knife could come through the window from up in this area and kill you too. If you ever screw up this part and you have to run all the way back. So here what we're doing is we uh, we killed that painting guardian. We're getting up this ladder, pull out the bow, and there's a section I'm going to be shooting to make a sound cue where the guy's going to walk off the edge here. So there's this little bar you can see to the right of the crosshair. We're shooting uh, right in between these lines beside that giant section right there. Right around that spot, right on that line even is fine. Or right, right beside it. And if you shoot roughly that spot right there, this, this uh, painting guardian is gonna walk right off the edge. If he doesn't do it, just shoot another spot, wait again, keep doing it. But if you hit the right spot, he'll walk right off. Um, we're gonna try to go across here. I'd be careful when uh, it comes to running on this. Also, Necro, thank you for the bits. I appreciate it. Uh, this guy right here, he's just standing. Um, if we're roughly where the chandelier is hanging, he shouldn't see us yet, and we can just shoot him in the head and he'll fall off. Like that. So we're just on that corner of where the chandelier section is. It's a good reference for that. And then we're just going to go to the next corner right here. Same thing. Shoot the wall like we did for the first guy. And this guy will fall off as well. The ceiling right above his head is good enough for him to walk straight off. And there we go, he's gone. Sometimes he'll land, but he'll never actually get to you. Alternatively, let's say that guy doesn't fall. Let's say he walks down the ladder for whatever reason instead. He'll get stuck on the ladder halfway and you can roll off this ledge around the ladder and he'll just be stuck on the ladder. So as long as you're quick, you can, you can still avoid that alternate situation if he doesn't want to go off the ledge. As long as he's on the middle of the ladder and he's stuck, that's good. Uh, Light Snake, thank you for the prime sub. I appreciate it. Enjoy your remotes, man. So we're going to rotate this lever to bring the lift down as well. Now, this gargoyle, basically, you're trying to go on the opposite side that it's moving towards. So you can see we're kind of playing like a little bit of a cat and mouse right here, trying to just get a larger distance away from him so he can't catch up. Uh, if he does, you're going to have to dodge the attacks. So be practiced on that if you need to, um, but just try to keep as much distance as you can. This part is a little tricky. The way I play it is super aggressive. I think for me it's comfortable, but for a lot of people this will be very tricky to do. Um, so there's a couple things to look out for. This guy right here, sometimes he will do an attack where you get stuck in behind his shield and then he'll uh, keep you there. So you have to kind of expect that so that you can run away from him and not get trapped in his body and then get hit by the gargoyle or him right after. So um, I don't know if he's going to do that attack right now on this, but we'll see. So no, he just did like a thrust. There's a slam There's a with the shield, overhead attack, a thrust, and a sweep, I believe, are the, are the common attacks you'll see. Um, so just be really careful about getting stuck on that guy. We're going to go a little bit further to the left on the staircase. You can see I'm not right in the middle. Uh, this guy is going to jump on the right-hand side, and when he does this jump attack, we're going to roll um, right around here. And we're going to iframe his attack. That's tricky. You'll get used to it, though. Um, and if he doesn't do this attack, there's nothing else he can do that will hit you if you walk this way. Now we're going to be looking back with the camera while running straight. And we're going to see if they throw any javelins at us. They didn't, but on this part, sometimes they'll toss javelins at you. And you're going to want to get ready to dodge them. So don't run full speed just yet. Kind of jog like I'm jogging. And then get your stamina full so you can run full speed at this part. When you turn this corner here, this guy will do a multitude of different attacks. Uh, right here he does the jump attack. This is another kind of tricky one to dodge. You want to just be delayed on it. Wait, he missed me, so we're good. And then as soon as we get onto this little thing right here, um, we roll onto it over that thing, and then we just get a little bit of distance and we look back. Um, you can even roll a second time when you're on here, but just make sure you rotate the camera as quick as you can because like the other part, when you're running up this, they can throw javelins at you 
when you're on this beam right here. And you're going to want to stay extremely centered on this path because the Silver Knights themselves will hit you through the walls with their javelins as well. So uh, you're looking out for projectiles uh, coming from these guys. As soon as you're at the top, they can't throw anything. You're safe. Um, like right here, you're, you're completely fine. One of them will fall off a lot of the time too. But what we're waiting for now is for those Silver Knights to stop shooting. You'll be able to hear them stop. So I'm popping every soul that I have, making best use of the time while we're waiting. Getting 20,000 souls from those that I just consumed. Turn in the corner now because it's safe. Uh, and now here's a situation that's interesting. So this guy on the left hand side, not the one we're looking at now, but the other one, uh, there's a pattern he shoots in where he'll shoot two arrows very close together. That is when it's safe to go, where you will not be hit from behind when you're turning right on this ledge. So as soon as you hear two arrows shoot almost back to back, not one and then a rest and then another, like one and then like a very small pause with another, that's when you turn. Um, sometimes he won't even be shooting at all. Sometimes he just won't see you, so like you're fine. And if you don't hear anything, then that's fine. But really pay attention to the sound coming from the left. Wait for those two shots that are close together. In the meantime, you might have to bait out some attacks. That's why I'm waiting right here. Um, and it looks like I'm good. So I just go up. And we're running to this corner. We're getting here until he pulls out his sword, and then we're running back, and this guy will fall right off. If you have roughly this distance on this guy when he's at the corner and you start running, He'll typically do this attack. He can do it from further back as well, but once you see him pull out the sword like that and run at you, you want to move back. Now, let's say he doesn't fall off. If he doesn't fall off, you're going to want to get used to parrying his regular attacks and get in on a combo where he's going to do another predictable attack, walk up and parry him, and then you're going to have to knock him off. It's a little tricky. If you do this part right with the running and everything, he'll fall off most of the time anyways, but one skill to learn as a backup plan might be to kill that guy legit with parries. Um... And uh, now we're inside in Orlando Cathedral. So on this part, um, this is our bonfire before ONS. Let's see what we're doing here. So we're gonna be leveling up a little more maybe, or not, no, no level ups. Cause I leveled up earlier. And again, I'm trying to save a little bit of the budget so I can uh, set up the the other weapon that we're going to be acquiring from this giant blacksmith right here. Uh, this stair bit right here, this is actually a minor skip. Um, so it's not super hard. You want to basically just kind of be lined up straight with this area here. I kind of do like a little pivot to get myself started with running so I can have some extra time. So I kind of do like a semicircle back get that sprint going straight through here. And then around this part right here, you jump where you see that cloud on the ground because that has more height. So you'll actually clear the ledge. And you see I bounce off of it. It's a very tight squeeze, but uh, if you practice that a bit, this will be the best possible way to get through this area that I could recommend. It's used on speed runs typically. Um, it's not a glitch or anything. It is, it is just like a minor little parkour skip, but it's really good though. Saves you a bit of time, saves you some hassle. So you're gonna wanna practice that. Um, here we're running around the long way to get to the giant. So Hyper, this is actually a run that I've already completed. It's from the trilogy uh, run that I did. And we're commentating over it. It's the best example I can think of uh, that I've done for like a hitless run. If we're wanting like super consistent strats. And again, some of this stuff might be tricky for you guys to learn because like it's my preferred style of playing. So there's some aggressive uh, gameplay on it that could be considered not as safe if you're not practiced on it, but this is my interpretation of it. I think a lot of the information is pretty solid. Let me know what you think in the comments after the, the video is over. So you get Hawk Ring from this guy right here by squeezing around him. You can kill him first if you want to. Doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna talk to him and we're gonna, we're gonna buy some stuff, I think. What are we buying here? We're buying uh, Twinkling Titanites. So we're gonna get four Twinkling Titanites from him because they're pretty expensive. And we're going to get some more standard arrows because we need some more arrows. Twinkling Titanites are important because the weapon he drops upgrades with them. We're going to pick up a bunch more of them just in the environment. But having, uh, I think, roughly the six that I have right now is really good to start off with. So that by the time the end of the game comes around and we need the weapon, it'll be fully upgraded. So buy as many as you can really manage to get from there. 
but keep in mind you will be finding more later so kind of account for how many you're going to get for free and then we're going to go up here because we have the weaponsmith box and we don't need anything from him at all we're going to throw the black fire bombs but make sure you have the weaponsmith box before you kill this guy because he's the last possible point of the game that you can buy it from um unless you go back to andre later on so like at this point you kind of want to just get it from him if you need to and you really want the Twinkling Titanites from him if you can too, because he's the only one that sells them. So I'm just over this handrail throwing the firebombs at his face. It's pretty easy to figure out the angle for it. Uh, if you feel more comfortable buying more firebombs earlier on, you can do that if you got to practice the aim, or you can use some regular ones to practice that you can pick up in Firelink at the beginning of the game. So then we homeward bone back to this bonfire. Uh, because he gave us uh, some souls and everything, and we got the materials... Uh, we can upgrade that blacksmith hammer if we want to. But I think right here, what I'm prioritizing is leveling the character more because we're not going to use that hammer just yet. We're going to be using the crystal halberd on ONS. It's much better. Um, let's see. Am I leveling? I'm kind of just like fumbling around right here, so I'm debating what I want to do. These stat, These stats aren't like, you know, like a like a hard and fastened rule or anything. Like you literally can freestyle a little bit. You just want a good balance of strength and dex. Um, but like there's no, it's not like the biggest deal if it's different numbers than what I have on the screen right here. It can be a little bit off. I'm just really debating on what's going to be the better option. Because eventually you do want high strength, high dex for this run. Uh, and I think um, I'm going with strength, so 24 strength. And I also have put that symbol of avarice back on to decrease my health again so I can get in red tier stone range for ONS to get that 50% damage bonus. Bobatron, thank you for the five months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. So same little jump over here. And um, we're, we're doing this early so that by the time we get to this area, we already have half of our health missing. It's just less time to have to wait, right? So we're being efficient by, by having that on. And uh, I think I just wait here for a moment. So if anyone has any questions about the run really quickly for the next minute, just let me know. Uh, what's the next big run, Woozy? I'm going to be doing uh, zero damage on DS2, all bosses. Uh, so here we got the... Uh, got all of our stuff set up. I think I'm just checking some things. Okay, actually I took, I took the helmet off. You'll see my health is a little bit more than it should be for red tier stone range. That's because there's one little bit of fall damage we take before we go to ONS. So cut it a little short of red tier stone range and then wait for this guy to come up the, the staircase so he has a good space from you. You really want to see him at the top of that second staircase and then you can roll down here and you're safe. And just keep rolling through there um, to the fog gate, you're good. And that's how to get to ONS. Uh, Blander, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Also, friend, I appreciate that as well. DS2 run will probably take like at least three to six months or something like that, probably. That's my guess. All right, ONS time. Let's go. So on ONS, this is like the most complicated fight in the entire game, um, for like this run at least. Definitely in any percent. Um, there's a lot of things you're going to be doing that require thinking of two different things at once, right? So you're going to be thinking about what's going on with Ornstein, what's going on with Smo simultaneously, but the the ultimate goal is because we're going for Ornstein first that you want Smo to not actually be able to reach you with any attack he does. So there's a little bit of predict predictions that you have to make um, based on the circumstances. So you're always gonna wanna wonder like, is it gonna be possible that I get hit two seconds after I commit to attacking Ornstein by Smo? Like, is there enough time to escape? You're not just thinking of, can I hit Ornstein? You're thinking, can I hit him and then escape two seconds later and then still not have an attack that would connect with the character? So you want to buy yourself pockets of time. And by doing that, um, you'll be safe. So Ornstein typically will do an attack that will reach you where, when Smo is still far away at the beginning. So I'm kind of just going for some attacks here. I got insane damage on this, so it really won't take long to kill him. And you see I'm kind of, ro like with the camera focus, I'm rotating around to try to get Smo stuck on that pillar already. You're always rotating, you're always keeping Smo centered with a pillar, that's basically the idea. So if you just pay attention to like the, the focus point of where we're heading with the camera, it's always just going to be keeping Smo in a centered fashion with a pillar. 
and then ultimately baiting attacks from Ornstein that are that are safe to punish. The ones that are really safe are the two-hand attacks. Follow up from that combo is pretty safe too. Uh, that was a really quick phase one on Ornstein and Smo. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna show you an example from something else in that that run that I'm gonna link. So if you watch the ONS fight from the zero damage run, all bosses that I did recently, that'll be a much better example on all the RNG that you can get on it. Different attacks that Ornstein will do. It's it's much less damage than that I'm dealing on that run, so the fight lasts longer. And I'll have that video linked um, in the description of this run and on the screen. So here we're keeping Smo behind a pillar. And we're kind of just running around, doing like a little semicircle and a running attack every time he slams. Um, if he does the swipe attack, where he goes back and forth with it, you kind of just bait out a second one, run around him and do it. If he does the butt slam, you can get back in there and punish. Sometimes I don't, though. These attacks, the shovel ones, you don't actually punish at all. They're too quick to recover. This one right here is the double attack. So I go back in to make him follow up, and then I just circle around, hit him again. Pretty simple. Um, there's also one more attack where he'll slam without jumping, and then he can follow it up with a swing as well. So you can bait that by going close to the hammer, then running back. So that's good. Uh, we put on the symbol of Avarice again to get more bonus souls because we just killed the boss, and I heal up so I don't die. And then because we have that helmet on, it gives us 60,000 instead of uh, whatever it would normally be. In this next part, we're going to kill Guinevere. Uh, killing Guinevere despawns all the enemies in the area because uh, it removes the illusion of Anor Orlando, which essentially is like all the giants and everything like that. Makes Gwendolyn kind of angry, so he removes everything. But ultimately makes this run a little bit safer when you're on your way to Duke's archives. So uh, you'll, you'll also get the Lord Vessel immediately. It's way quicker than talking to her. Uh, so now we're going to level a little bit more. 20 Endurance, looks like I'm going for a little bit more strength as well, or I'm debating. There's a debate, what, what, what's it gonna do? Is it gonna be Dex? Okay, 29 Dex, 20 Endurance for the latest upgrades. Uh, and then the next boss on the list is Sif. So there's quite a lot of time to explain what's going on with Sif on the way over here. We're gonna be running again all the way through um, the Darkroot Forest area. And we're gonna go past where that covenant was uh, across the mini bridge there and then to the other section, which is really easy. There's no enemies that can hit you once you're past that, that covenant area. It's really simple. Uh, this guy, this Titanite Demon, sometimes jumps when you're coming through uh, this area from this way. So always be ready to, to dodge his jump attack. Uh, that's gonna take some practice as well, but just don't be too close to him. Just kind of be on the outside of the wall. Uh, you should be able to one-shot every single one of these enemies now with this weapon, because it's pretty damn good. Uh, the running attack, I'd recommend locking on after you queue the attack just to make sure it hits. I'm kind of just freestyling it, just going with like a regular attack. And at this point, you see I've taken off the weapon, because there's no more enemies that I have to kill that block the pathway, and I can just run through them. And I put on that symbol of avarice to decrease the health again, because we're trying to buy our ourselves some time with without having to wait. So by the time we get to Sif, our health will be perfect. And uh, I'm taking the left side of the tree line over here. Um, I wouldn't recommend going right by the cliff unless you're at like this part, for example, because you can slip off on some of the earlier parts and uh, fall. So I try to keep a relatively left focus on the on the pathway. And then uh, this bandit right here, I just kind of wait to see what he does. Sometimes he attacks, sometimes he doesn't. You might have to dodge. Uh, I keep running straight through this little mini bridge. Can jump over the wall here to take more health. Speed up that RTSR. And then this part, you're really not going to get hit by anything. Like, unless you just stop moving, there's no danger at all. Um, they, the, the people that are chasing you aren't even going to catch up most of the time, so you're pretty safe. I wouldn't stop here, but you can just not have to stress as much. can relax a little bit. Um, now on Sif, on the fight itself, the important things to consider that you're going to want to know is um, the, the biggest thing is him jumping and his paws hitting you. It's not actually any of the attacks with his sword at all. It's mainly just, like, his paws landing on your character model. Um... And you'll see he'll try to do these like 180 jumps onto your head and then from there jump again and the problem is if he jumps really soon after landing it might be so soon that you can't do another roll 
So you want to have good spacing where he just misses you. Uh, and the idea is that when you roll and he does a jump attack, he does like a 180 towards you, you roll backwards again, and he'll, he'll, he'll usually jump sideways or forwards. But never really backwards from that position. Um, but you'll, you'll see in this fight, uh, he does that run-up attack, he's do, he does the overhead slam. We always punish the overhead slam. There's two iterations where he'll do that, uh, two combos where he'll do it. So right here is one of them. I bait the one attack with the two swipes, and then he doesn't do the follow-up with the overhead there, but that's another opportunity where he will, and this is one of the big ones you want to go for. So I'm trying to wait for that overhead attack out of the two swipes. You'll notice I also space the first one, because you don't need to dodge it. It sets up the spacing right. Here we go, so there's one overhead attack. I hit him. I run away immediately. Um, again, there's this. And then he'll do the overhead. Another uh, option of where he does the overhead is, is like you could see in the beginning where he runs up and he does the slice. He'll follow up with an overhead from that pretty often too. And that's the only two things you really want to focus on on this. And it keeps you in a situation where you're not so close that you'll get hit by the paws often. Uh, you see I keep a decent distance just in case he jumps. So he, he what he did right there was super close. And you can see that's why the rolling timing is huge because if you've rolled too late, the next roll might not be early enough to actually encompass that next jump that he does, and you just you're just locked into it, right? So I like to roll backwards twice if I can, because he always kind of goes sideways or forwards. And there's a running attack on that overhead. Well, these spins you just kind of you can just get away on. You can run back into him after that to see if he can, does the other combo with the two slices in the overhead. Um, there's one uppercut attack he does that's really fast, and he does that backstep attack you saw right there with the uh, the 360. Those two are the quickest attacks you'll see. The uppercut one happens when you're on an angle and he's jumped back from you sometimes. So expect it at like the corner of the screen and all that. And then the, the 360 backstep swipe is um, just something he does to make space. And it's very fast, so just be ready for that. When he's limpy, I take the bow out, I shoot him. Not too bad. Uh, put on the symbol of Avarice, warp back. I get the bonus soul still. Uh, as long as victory achieved is on the screen, you can warp out of any fight. We got 48k from that. Uh, so here is actually a part of the game where we gotta get a ring for Nito. The first ring that we're gonna need to do Nito. Uh, is Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring. Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring actually uh, makes your footsteps silent. And we're going to get another ring that makes us less visible as well, so we'll be very stealthy for that fight so we don't pull the skeletons. Uh, to get this ring that we're looking for, the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring, we actually have to go back to Sense Fortress a second time. So the protocol to get through is pretty similar to the first time, um, with some small differences that I'll point out when we get there. But same idea, just kind of running through there. You can, again, just gun it through there immediately. Gun it through these things if you can. Uh, it's okay to wait if you need to, but this guy right here, you want to be just full speed, right right around the left side of his hand. You see on that stab attack, it doesn't hit me because there's no hitbox on the weapon yet until it comes out in front of him. So we're running uh, so close to him that he's only retracting his arm and it doesn't do damage yet. Get ready to dodge the projectiles from this guy again. Again, this is kind of a part in the game that can be problematic running through here twice because if you have a hard time with this area, having to do it multiple times is a little sketchy. Um, so we're turning the corner here where the boulder would be normally. Um, it shouldn't be active on the second trip back on that platform, but once you hit the button there, it rotates the mechanism, I believe. And we're just going to try to make the break downwards again, down this path, uh, take that lift back up again where the mimic is. But sometimes this guy will chase you down the stairs, so while the lift is actually arriving, we look in the doorway in the far side just to see if that enemy's chasing us. Uh, worst case scenario, he jumps from the doorway across the entire map with an attack to, to, that connects to you. So just always be aware that he could, be, he could be chasing you when you get down there. Also, a thing that's relevant the first time you arrive to this area, when you get the symbol of Avarice, he still might be chasing you, so watch out for that. Uh, we come up here like we did last time, but then we actually make a loop back through this upper path form, platform or pathway that we went by. We do a plunge attack right here. And then uh, on this part, we're waiting for this guy to run into a situation where he's stuck. And we're looking behind us because that serpent could still be chasing us. So we just we, we want to know if he's going to be coming up behind us or not while we're waiting. This guy over here gets stuck because he's an idiot. 
and there's no way he can jump out of that spot and get you now. You're pretty safe. You grab the ring and you homeward bone back. All is good. And that's basically how to get out of there, and uh, you never have to go back there again. So it looks like I'm putting in a little bit more levels uh, to the character. 30 Dexterity, 26 Strength, 22 Endurance. Looks like I'm switching it around a little bit. Am I trying to save some souls? Let's see. Okay, so I go with 27 Dex and 30. Um, or wait, 27 Strength and 30 Dex, I believe. Yeah, 27 strength and 30 dex, and I still leave the endurance at 20. I upgrade the blacksmith hammer as much as I can right now. Uh, we should be able to get to plus four. And then we're gonna pick up the remaining Twinkling Titanites later in the game, so we'll be good. Now we're heading to twi um, to um, Pinwheel. So this is the first time going through the catacombs on this run. Uh, before we do so, I'm gonna pick up these these fire bombs. Uh, these are for these are for better chaos. You can get them in the very beginning of the game too. You're, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have two of any kind of firebomb for the end of the game when you get to Bed of Chaos because you need that on this run with the strats that we're using. So it doesn't matter if you pick them up later, if you pick them up now, as long as you have two of any kind of firebomb, you're good. Um, have even more if you're if you're just wanting to practice or whatever, but I guess two is good. We're gonna activate Firelink Alter. You'll notice I actually just walked right into the hole. I didn't even talk to Frampt. That's because on this run, we don't have to become friends with him. There's nothing he can do for us that helps. All bosses is different. You would want to be friends with him so he can break down slabs into chunks. So we're warping back to Firelink, going to, um, to Pinwheel now. I'll skip over this stuff just to... So we're just coming up that side entrance right next to Frampt. Now you'll see I have the hammer out right here. So I'm just running right through where the skeleton is. We're backing up to try to kill him when it's safe. So we're baiting him out of there. There's some attacks this guy does. That jump attack right there is pretty good. I'm not apparently even going to kill him. I'm just going to run through. I'd recommend killing him if you can. That's much smarter. I'm not sure why I didn't do that there. Uh, now, this scenario is super, super sketchy. So, there's actually a better way to do this that's also in the zero damage run that I recently completed, the all boss one. I'll, again, be linking it in the video. Right here, what you want to do is have that other guy killed that I was talking about, and then approach the wall at this corner. You're going to walk into the corner right around this region, I'll point with the mouse, right here, and you're gonna attack the guy through the wall, through the corner. And then there's no way he can hit you in midair when you go off this ledge. Because if you see right here, look how close he was. You don't want him to be alive, you wanna hit him through the wall. So this was a little risky, I'm not sure why I did that. Um, I might, Maybe I didn't know how to do that strat at this point. It might have been a newer thing. Uh, here, always expect this guy's gonna be attacking as soon as you turn the corner, because he could actually just shoot a fireball at you immediately. So just make sure you look at his hand. If it's glowing red, he's just about to attack. Uh, right here, he does a little later than he could have, but still pretty early. Roll through the fireball, hit him, he should die. Just be very careful with um, expecting an immediate attack on that guy, because sometimes what happens is you fall down the hill and you can't roll because you're falling, so you get hit. Um, so I'd even wait on the hill if you can, just to roll through it. If it's immediate. So here we're going to pull the bow back out. We're killing this necromancer. The whole purpose of these guys are they keep the skeletons respawning infinitely. As soon as they're dead, the skeletons will die for good. Uh, so we take him out first. Uh, you can see we have this rock set up blocking us so that if he shoots fireballs, he can't hit us which is just a little bit past that statue on the right that I passed when I'm walking up that platform or that, that pathway. These skeletons were hiding behind this ridge right here because as soon as they rebound off it, you'll see they'll slide into, into the gravity and die. If they do make it around, you just hit them as soon as they disassemble or do their attack or whatever. 
with the hammer. That's why I have this weapon out, because it's much better to kill them than the halberd. But we're just dunking these guys. Uh, we can shoot them with arrows to make them roll off the edge too, like this guy right here. Um, I take off the flip ring, you'll notice. So I just have Slumbering Dragon Crest ring on. That's it on this part. And I'm approaching the part where we're going to do the catacomb skip. This is another minor skip that is uh, not a glitch, but a little tricky to do sometimes. So the whole purpose of this is getting into a position where you can face that way completely. And you're going to roll one time that way. And then you're going to roll another time this way. Um, now, there's enemies below here. I don't know if you can see them. So you can see... Let me see if I can get it. So there is enemies up in the top corner of the screen right there when I fell. Right here. There's one right here, one right here. These guys, they can actually be really close to this spot. You're going to want to watch below and make sure that these, these floating heads aren't right by here. Because if you hit the ground here and the game doesn't let you roll immediately, you will get hit by them. So keep that in mind. They'll explode. You'll your uh, roll recovery will be eaten. The input will be eaten, and then you'll be dead. So make sure they're not near here. So in case the game fails on letting you roll immediately, you're still safe. And then we have a little bit of health right here, so we're gonna heal up a bit because we're pretty weak. And then we're gonna fall and plunge attack this bone wheel. We're gonna roll immediately back into the wall so we don't get hit through the ground by this one. And then. Uh, so here is where you can use some more fire bombs. I put the symbol of avarice on again just to set up the uh, health for pinwheel. And I switch to a fire bomb. I'm gonna kind of line up uh, a little bit further back from the ledge, maybe a couple feet, and I'm gonna throw right ahead, and it's gonna explode behind the pin, the bone wheel, and the blast radius is gonna hit the bone wheel, and that's uh, gonna kill it when we do it successfully here. So um, it kind of stopped rolling. That was kind of weird, but that's the idea. You want to throw fire bombs at them if you can. Uh, if you don't want to throw firebombs at them in this situation, notice how this guy turns after he stops rolling for a little bit. Let's see. Right here. See when he stops? So if you don't have firebombs left, take off the slumbering dragon crest ring. For whatever reason, it makes them all weird and all that. Take off the ring that mutes your, your footsteps and wait for a second until he starts walking and then put the ring back on again. Let him walk around this corner over here, all the way around the corner, and you're good. And then you can you can escape. He'll walk all the way around there. It's another alternate way to do that that's pretty safe. Uh, the Mimic Helmet's on Vex for uh, for lowering your health to uh, get Red Tear Stone Ring for Pinwheel. Now for Pinwheel, because the Red Tear Stone setup is pretty close to the wire because you have to fall down and take more damage as well. Uh, we, we don't want to actually have red tear stone before we get to pinwheel. So my health you'll notice is just a little bit over that line before it hits that red tear stone range, that last chunk of the bar. Uh, and it should be good enough to fall right into and get red tear stone ring. Let's see if I actually do that. So I have the Blacksmith Hammer plus four on Pinwheel. It's pretty good for damage. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is do a toggle escape, which is successful. So, or, um, uh, yeah, I guess it would be called a toggle escape. Toggle escaping is where you basically take a weapon that's on the offhand and you switch to it as soon as you hit the ground or get staggered by something, which immediately makes the character invulnerable to the, uh, the um, consequences of that. So basically... If I hit the ground, I'll get a, a recovery animation where I bend my knees and I have to take a while to actually be able to do any inputs. But if I'm switching my weapon from the bow to the regular weapon when I hit the ground, it, I can just keep running, basically. Um, it's like almost basically doing a roll recovery where you spam the button and then you roll immediately when you land, but that's not consistent enough on this all the time, so I did it this way this time. You can do it either way you want. It allows you to just get into the pinwheel fight sooner. My weapon's on, I two-handed. Two attacks on Pinwheel, he's dead. It's really easy if you do it that way. Now, let's say I didn't get that toggle um, properly, or I didn't roll recover into the fight, and I had that big recovery where you have to absorb the impact of the fall. It's a little harder to kill Pinwheel then, because he has the chance to multiply an attack before you can do anything on the second attack that you're going to be dealing. So you might want to attack and then wait and see what happens, and then attack when it's safe. Uh, but you're really killing him pretty fast, so... Uh, if you can do that, you are solid. 
Uh, hopefully you're following also like the inputs on the on the controller while I'm doing this too, just so you know uh, when I do like the toggle escape, how I'm actually doing it. You're sitting the D-pad. Um, so for this part, I've taken off my rings and I've put on the slumbering dragon crest ring by itself. Uh, to go through Tomb of Giants in the dark, pretty simple. You follow these little markers. Uh, you'll get used to it by watching the video a lot too if you want to refer back to this part over and over, you can get the feel of it. It's pretty simple. Uh, let's make a turn to the right here. Um, now these guys, okay, so the thing is they have a lot of different attacks, but they're really hard to actually get hit by most of the time I find. The quicker attacks they have are more of like stomping attacks. Um, but the way that I know that they're going to lunge or do something is their eyeballs because you can't see their arm in the dark until you get close enough. So this guy right here, because I can see his head moving a little bit, I know he's about to attack when the eyeballs swoop up like that, so I'm just ready. Uh, even though I could only see him, his arm like at the very last second, right? So you're looking for their eyeballs uh, moving. Here, there's a different way to do this. It's a little bit safer because they can fall on your head and stagger you, which would actually end the run. But I'm, I'm racing to the bonfire as quick as I can because I haven't found this method well at the point that I've done this run. But there's a better way. When you come off of here, you're going to actually want to take a path to the, uh, the right side of this cliff. So instead of rolling back like this, let's say we do this instead. Let's say you land and then you go hard right to the ladder. So you can see the ladder right here where my cursor is circling. You make a line right off and then you fall beside the ladder on the left side of it and then you run to the bonfire around the long way. So this, what happens now is if they fall down, they can't fall on your head, and then they take more time to get to you because they'll probably try to take the ladder down or take this way. If they fall down here, kill them with the hammer as quick as you possibly can, but try this way where you run around to the ladder. I, I'm telling you, it's much better. Uh, you'll see that as an example in the zero damage run as well. All these, all these extra strats that I'm mentioning, you will probably see in the zero damage run that is linked uh, in the description and in the video. So we hit this bonfire, we light it, we go back up. <clears throat> We're going to try to get the Skull Lantern from where Patches is. Pick up these souls over here too if you want some extra levels. Then We're going to warp back. Uh, and now the goal is to head to the area where Stray Demon is. So the Undead Asylum from Firelink. We're gonna take the crow backwards there as if we're going to fight Stray Demon. And we are going to take the Skull Lantern and trade it to the crow for the Fog Ring. And that's the second ring we need for Nito in combination with that Slumbering Dragon Crest ring we got earlier. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it impossible for the skeletons to actually see us unless we're close enough or hear us. And that means we can 1v1 Nito. Um, and it's purely based on skill. There's no random factors that will kill you that are outside of your control. It's all based on skill at that point. So we're gonna go uh, forward right here off of this lift. Uh, for this part, I like to roll with the flip ring onto this little platform. It makes it a little bit easier for me. Um, just make sure you, you're careful with that. And uh, because I'm not doing quit outs on this run, uh, I will have to make multiple trips back here. When you drop the Skull Lantern to the Crow, you can quit out and get the ring immediately and then Homeward Bone. That's the faster way of doing it. I'd recommend practicing the run like that until you're doing your final attempt. If you really don't want to use save quits, you can eliminate them in the end. But when you're practicing, just use the save quits to speed up all these item drops. So the world might be mended. Congrats on the run the other day. Enjoy your fun runs and guide making and good luck with the DS2 mapping and eventual run. Uh, Mitch, thank you for the 13 months. Welcome back, man. I appreciate it. So uh, for our rings right now, we still have that slumbering dragon crest ring on. I'm going to put on the, uh, I believe I have the hawk ring. So actually slumbering dragon crest ring is gone. Hawk ring is going to extend the, um, the range of our bow. That's the ring we picked up by the giant blacksmith in that chest beside him. So we'll get more damage on these hollows right here. We can kill them off really quickly. Alternatively to this, if you don't actually want to use the Hawk Ring or kill all these guys, you can kill the first two of them and then still have Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring on and go to the Crow without having them interrupt you. But just to be super safe, kill all of them if you want to. Um, and then we're going to fall down here. And we're dropping that Skull Lantern. And this is the point at, in which you could quit out of the game and you could reload back in and the ring will be right there. I don't do that. 
in this run, so I Homeward Bone. And then we run back and grab it. Uh, what I will do is I'll fast forward through that part because it's the same thing to get there from the first time. We're just going back to Fire Link again. We're running back to the Asylum a second time. And there we are. If you're doing it this way, you can pretty much do the exact same thing you just did the first time. And you are solid. So we're killing these guys off again. Uh, you don't really want to let these guys get too close. So if you have a pretty good aim with your bow, you should be fine. But it's kind of hard to hit them when they're moving sometimes. Aiming in this game is kind of silly sometimes, so keep that in mind. And we got the ring, fog ring. And we're going to homeward bone again. Back to Tomb of Giants, we're going to put our rings on for Nito once we get there. But on the way over, though, it's really important to put on just the Fog Ring and the Flip Ring. Uh, strength is going to get boosted to 29 right here before we head to Nito. So we have the Ring of Fog on the Flip Ring, and we have our Crystal Halberd instead of the, bl the Blocksmith Hammer for this area. Uh, this is where it's going to be a little tricky if you've never ran through here where it's dark. So what I do is, like, once I pass the patches, I know that the wall that I need to fall is on the right side. I hug the wall as much as I can, and I start rolling as soon as I get to the corner right here, because this enemy on the left that you might have seen, right here, you see his hand right there, he'll jump out of nowhere and do the most ridiculous attacks that will connect with you if you do not immediately start rolling here. So again, remember how the roll I said earlier has longer distance and better recovery? This is actually more effective than, than actually running around the corner. It'll get you uh, a further distance in less time. And because of the fog gates right there, stamina doesn't really matter for the further, like the later part. So we get our stamina back through the fog gate. I roll out of the fog gate immediately. Again, pretty important. I think I ran right there by accident, but we're running straight forward from the fog gate. We're not going too far to the right. In the right hand side right here where the mouse is, there's an enemy. Uh, he will lunge out at you and he'll kill you if you just go slightly too far over this boundary. So try to be uh, in a... Uh, taking a pathway where you can't actually see him. If you can start, if you even see his body a little bit, then start moving more left. That's the best way to correct yourself. You go right off the ledge right here. You fall past another ledge to the floor. Uh, you're gonna want to watch out for this guy attacking right here. You go straight ahead. You fall through another hole, and then you're taking this wall around the right side again. And your final hole you fall through is uh, right behind you. Once you get around that right wall that curves, and there's a ladder, taking this right wall all the way into the uh, the cave where Nito is. Uh, and there's a Crystal Lizard coming up here. I believe it will supply the extra Twinkling Titanite we need for the hammer to be maxed out. Uh, if it doesn't, there's some more in the, in the, on the way to Seath, but this should give us some Twinkling Titanite. Yeah, we got two, so that now we can fully... Uh, should be able to full, fully upgrade the hammer pretty soon. I think that might be enough. Uh, we're kind of rolling, or just, or sorry, we're running around these things as they're popping out of the ground. This guy right here, uh, it's a tricky situation, but you can run into that guy when he's burrowing and it won't do damage. So that by the time he shoots, he's already missing you. Um, now, if you arrive on a, on a timer where maybe he's shooting sooner and this guy's still going in the ground, you might just want to roll the attack to be safe. Because I've gotten hit, I've gotten shot in the head trying to start a roll right after that guy's gone that pops out of the ground. So um, be careful there. Most of the time you just do that, it's fine. Uh, go through this left side here, roll past this pinwheel before it attacks. And then on this pinwheel right here, this is actually a part where you can get hit. So you see how, how he's falling? Um, he'll, he'll actually land on you and stagger you because he's actually floating on bones right here. So you're gonna break those bones, he's always gonna fall. Make sure you're left enough where his body doesn't st like stagger you or that's the end of the run. So make sure you're on the left right there. Now we're gonna throw on that uh, Slumbering Dragon Crest ring on top of the Fog ring. So we're taking the Darkwood Green ring that we have on right now. We're switching it for the, the Slumbering ring. And then we're getting ready to go into Nito. So you'll see I switched the ring right there. I'm trying to get like a little bit of a sprint to kind of jump into the hole here so we get a lot of distance. The reason being that if he does the Gravelord Sword Dance the second we get in the fight, it's gonna be harder to actually see his character model to time the roll because he's kind of hidden back in the shadows. So you want to be as close to him as you can when he does that attack. So we get in there, we're, we're spamming roll to roll recover if we can. I didn't get the roll recovery, so I landed hard on the ground. Um, it's not what you want, but 
if that happens, look up immediately with the camera and, and just try to make out the best you can of where Nito is and see if his hand is moving because if he's doing the sword dance attack immediately, you're going to get ready to roll like pretty soon after this. So you'll see he is doing it right here. And you can see that line that, that just kind of rose up right here in the corner. That is what you're looking at. And then you see it go on the ground. That's how I knew how to roll that. So that's like the hardest situation you're going to get right out, out of the intro of the fight because it's really hard to see what he's doing. So just pay attention in the distance. Uh, you can see that, that little sliver of his sword. It's pretty good. You're going to use that to time the roll. Now, back on this situation again, there's a strap that's really easy that you can do that's just been discovered. I didn't even know this until a month ago. But if you just stand on the spot and you block with any weapon in your hand, like so for example, you have the halberd and you just stand still and you hold block, that sword will miss the character. It won't even hit you. So that's actually a way easier way to do this. Anytime he does this attack, in fact, you can just hold block and you're fine. As long as it's not with a shield, but it's with a weapon, you're good. Um, common scenario to be aware of at the intro of the fight after you've gotten into it. Nito can get stuck on skeletons where you're going to have to homeward bone and do it again. Or if you're allowing quit outs, you can quit out of the fight. But he might get stuck on skeletons, so if he doesn't move towards you, don't waste too much time uh, worrying about it. Just get out of there and run back. Uh, a lot of his attacks are pretty simple. He's got some swipes that have follow-ups. So that's a single swipe right there. This thrust you just walk beside, pretty easy. Uh, he's so slow and his hitboxes are not too bad, so you can walk around him on a lot of attacks. Uh, whenever he goes into a ball, just run away. Try to get some space. But again, we're, remember, we're trying to avoid um, the back corner with the skeletons here. So there's a certain boundary we're never going to pass. You're going to want to play within 75% of the arena. You're never going to want to go into this back quarter of it. Uh, on the slam overhead, you can roll. Uh, you can run around him and just space it if you want to, get some more damage, because you'll have more stamina. And uh, there's like this little dot right here I like to use as a reference on the wall. Once I'm past that by a little bit, I know that's the farthest I can really be before these giant skeletons might see me, because it pushes you out a little bit into the open. So I use that dot as a reference when I'm trying to run away for the AoE attack. Um, and again, Nito's pretty simple. It's just... Uh, Learning the basic attacks he does with his sword. Sword dance with the block is super easy too, because that strat exists now. We're going to put on that symbol of avarice to get more souls when he dies. We're going to switch our rings back to red tear stone and just flip ring. Or the darkwood grain ring. I also pop the soul of Sif here. You can just pop whatever extra souls you have left over. I'm using that as an opportunity to save time while the bonfire loads and everything. Uh, and then we're going to go back to four kings. So Symbol of Avarice, make sure that comes off the character immediately. Uh, you'll notice that our item is here now from earlier in the game when we killed Lotrex. So there's the five humanities and the ring he drops. If you did the quit out on that, you could have had it way earlier in the game, but we don't really need it until now. So we grab it on the way over here for efficiency. And then uh, while we're on the elevator, I believe we set up our uh, health with the Symbol of Avarice again. Oh, apparently I'm popping a soul here too. Okay, so I'm just getting rid of all the souls in the inventory. Lifts are very good for that, so if you need to organize items, get rid of them, whatever, do them on the lifts. Uh, we put on the symbol of Avarice right here to start draining our health. And uh, putting on the feather arrows that we have as well. All right, cool. So we kill these guys. We get the transient curses. These are essential for killing the ghosts in New Londo. You need these. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm going to use one right before we get into one of the, the buildings over here at a very particular point. And uh, I can tell you exactly why I do all this stuff when we get there. But right now I'm just waiting. If, you, if anyone has a question in chat again about the run or anything, let me know. We have a moment before we run through here. Where the skeletons necro for Nito, they were in the corner, they were in their default spawn. Also, this is going on YouTube, yes, this will be a YouTube video. Uh, sh sh uh, so this is from the, uh, the God run that we were doing, which ended up just being a trilogy run of the three games, back to back, Shy, so this is a VOD from before. Uh, DS3 Hitless already has a guide, type in exclamation point guide in chat. Already a Bloodborne guide and a DS3 guide as well. Um, 
And for anyone watching this video right now, if you want guides for the other games, they'll be in a playlist called Guides. And I'll be making more of them soon as well. So expect Sekiro, expect uh, DS2. So you can see we got Red Tear Stone. We took the symbol of Avarice off. We're running around these ghosts. Um, you'll notice though, let me go back a bit. I put the transient curse on my quick items right here so I can use it because we're going to be popping it at the top of these stairs. And the way I pop it is I run off to the side here, I use it here, and then we run. Now when you're going through this doorway, um, let's see if I do this properly. So I didn't do this properly, this is a mistake. The mistake is I'm in the middle of the doorway, I can get hit here from the left side. When I use that transient curse, the ghosts were already aggroing me, but they were kind of, um, I guess, uh, tracking me from that like side where I was beside the door. So the one on the left side here might be more to the side of the building because it knew I stopped moving earlier in the area. And these things can go through walls. So they'll track you like on all these weird angles or whatever. But you really want to enter this doorway to the right, like where you're hugging the right wall. Then no matter what happens, even if the attack uh, from the ghost on the left-hand side is a really long-range one, it'll miss you by a little bit. So never, never do that. I got lucky. Um, it never did attack there. But always be on the right side of this doorway. And then kind of veer off into the center again and get ready to do a running attack on this ghost from about this spot right here. If you do it from that spot, that means no matter what attack it does, it'll never connect to you because even its quickest attack won't have enough range. You'll you'll outrange it. And that's why the halberd's really good for this too versus the hammer. So you'll never trade with it as long as you have that, that gap closed perfectly or very, very nicely. Uh, this is really weird. This is something I made up to actually make the hallway uh, below this area clear. What I do is I run into the wall very slowly, and what this is doing is it's making the ghost that's on the other side of the wall track me in a really weird way, so it moves through the ceiling, because I'm moving so slow from the second story, that when I get down here, it won't even be there. It'll be gone. And you can see I turn the corner, there's no ghost, because I made it track me through the ceiling uh, by doing that. And it's 100% safe, it's worked every single time I've done it. Um, there is times where, it, where the ghost still is there, but it's still in a more ideal position. It's just safer than having to turn the corner and have it attack you. Uh, here you want to have a constant sprint because there's dudes attacking you through the ground, uh, so you don't want to slow down. You'll see the their hands will pop through the floor. The bottom of the screen, I was pretty quick there, so you didn't really see it too much. Um, going all the way to the bottom of the stairs here. Uh, you'll see these ghosts in the background occasionally, they'll kind of go back and forth here. If they're moving towards this direction and they don't come back to the right, that means they're chasing you. So, um, there's a spot up the stairs, if at the very top, you're standing there, they will come from the bottom around the wall and they'll try to hit you. So you can only be at the top of the stairs for a limited amount of time and you'll see why I need to do that. Um, well, actually on this run, so we can be a bit short at the top of the stairs, I just remembered. So on SL1 is the run where you don't wanna be up there for too long. We're still in a safe spot right here where we're standing. So again, I run up to here. Cause I have the bow upgraded, I forgot I could just kill Ingward pretty quickly. So uh, we just shoot him in the head three times and he is, uh, he's gone. So by the second shot, he starts running, we're already good. Uh, much easier on a regular character. I was thinking of SL1, so we get the key to the seal right here, uh, which is to drain the water. And if we're at the bottom of the staircase, uh, there's a ghost you see forming right here out of the water. And we're waiting for this ghost to go back into the water. Once it's gone underneath, then we start running. Because what, what will happen is he'll hit you through the wall if you don't know where he is and you just randomly turn this corner and go through. Uh, and that's ended a lot of runs. So that's a calculated way to make sure there's no way to get hit through the wall on this side. Uh, you'll see I run to the corner right here where this door is and I run back. The reason is there's a ghost on the far side of the hallway and we don't want to go too far uh, or that will be a problem too. So we run back, do some flips right here, try to get some, uh, some momentum just getting back up the stairs. And then we're going to wait in the middle of the stairs right here, a little bit higher up than the middle point. They're going to come through the wall. When they come through the wall, wait about a second and then start running. They'll try to lunge from you, keep in the middle of the pathway if you can, and then hug the left wall when you go through here. Uh, you should be 100% safe. There should be nothing that can possibly get you. The ghost that was originally in this wall, if you play the game normally, he'll actually be in the group over there, so he won't even be able to hit you. I roll there in case just to, just for you know precaution, but he won't be there. You'll be good. Um, and then we're going to drain the seal. Also, nerd or die, thank you for the uh, the nine months. Welcome back, man. I appreciate it. Uh, so Sans, this is on the remaster, so blocking the cancel doesn't matter. 
but a good point is that someone just brought up in chat, if you are playing the Prepare to Die edition, which is the original, you will have to be blocking with your weapon to be able to roll out of sprinting, which you'll see me doing naturally on this because there's a separate button for jumping in the remaster, but in the original, it's only on the B button. So to cancel a jump that you don't want out of sprinting and get a roll instead, remember to block with your weapon whenever you do it. Um, that's, that's really good advice. Now we're getting, um, we're getting that transient curse effect still from the earlier area because it lasts for five minutes and what that does is it allows us to, to kill these ghosts over here so because we pop that way earlier in the area it's still active i'm looking for two ghosts in particular over here there's one that flies into this building now with the feather arrows and the hawk ring equipped to the character you should have enough damage to kill them and then we're going to look at this one over here on the left um it doesn't matter if it takes a few tries to get this you can be patient and wait for it you still have a lot of time and you have a backup curse if you need it as well. And now we're gonna go to this part right here and we're gonna wait for a third ghost to come up and we're gonna shoot that one too. And now at this point, all three ghosts are dead that could possibly hit us when going through the fog gate. So there's no way to get hit here if we're quick. Uh, and then we're gonna heal up so we can fall down. Try to hug that wall if you can, just go really quick across this bridge. There'll be a dark wraith chasing you. He can't hit you through the wall as far as I know. So you'll be fine. You're gonna roll right out of the fog gate to the right and there's no ghosts. Now, alternatively, you don't actually have to kill any ghosts. You could just sit at the ledge that I was at uh, before I fell and wait for all three of them to get really close to you and then fall down. That'll still pull them far enough away where they shouldn't be able to connect and attack with you. As long as you can see all three of them, you're good. Don't get confused by the ghosts on the far left side, though, because those are the ones that go in the building. These are the ones that are outside by the final fog gate right here that you want. And uh, yeah, if you can pull them to the ledge over there, you could do it without killing them, as long as they're like on eye level with you or almost approaching ground level. Now here we have to put on the ring for uh, for the abyss that we got from Sif. And we have red tear stone ring and we have that ring on. We put back on the symbol of avarice. We're lowering, we're lowering our health again to get red tear stone. And uh, the way that I actually like to play Four Kings on the intro is there's a particular direction that you want to head so you can actually get to the, the first king that spawns as quick as possible. So I'm using this last platform here, uh, and I'm looking at the side of it on this angle, and I'm going to roll straight through here. And then I'm just going to keep heading straight from here. And if you're on this precise angle, or roughly maybe even a li little bit more right of an angle to this, you should meet up with the first king. Should be running right towards him. So you can see he was a little bit more to the right. So yeah, maybe just a little bit more to the right to that. But you're, you're heading in his direction. What this does is it decreases the chance of him doing a long range attack uh, that is magic based. So there's two long range attacks that are magic based. One is actually bad because it's heat seeking and it doesn't go away for more than 15 seconds. So you want to not have that attack if, if you can help it. If that does happen, your options are to homeward bone and keep doing the fight over and over again. You can quit out if you're allowing quit outs, that's even easier. Or you can actually run away from it and wait for it to disappear. But the problem with running away from that purple attack that chases you, which you may see later on in this as well, uh, there's a circular invisible boundary outside of the arena. And if you start hitting the wall and you don't know where it is because you can't see it, uh, you have to know which way the wall curves or you're going to be running into the wall and you're going to lose enough distance in within a matter of seconds to get hit by it because it's very fast. So you have to almost know where the wall curves and get used to that as well. Uh, I don't think anybody's really amazing at that, but Four Kings, pretty simple with the basic attacks. This overhead, you can just kind of strafe. Um, doesn't take too much damage to kill them because this weapon's ridiculous against them. And you can still hit them, you'll notice, as they're fading out. I can get two more hits right here. And this is going to be our method to kill only three Kings instead of four because we get extra damage. Um, you'll also notice I'm running... Okay, so when I approach this King... Let's pay attention to this here. So I've approached him, did the thrust, I just rolled through it. I walked to the side a little bit, and then I rolled back this way. So now I'm, rel I'm relatively centered with where I approached the king from. I'm a little bit to the right, but I try to remember how I approached him, and I run back exactly the way I remember coming, So, which is roughly like this, maybe a little bit more to the left now that I'm watching it back, but I'm trying to run back to where I came from because that's where the other king is going to be coming from. You can't get this perfectly necessarily unless you drop an item in the arena when you spawn, but see how close I am to him now? And then there's no chance he can do the purple attack either, which is really, really good. Um, so I predicted that super, super nicely. And then we're going to be um, just rolling through the combo attacks here. He dies very fast. Another two hits. Last one, I just stand on the spot and I wait. 
Um, there's no, no, there's no real direction. I know where to go now. I'm just kind of waiting, kind of shuffling, just randomly forward. And you'll know you're you're doing this in a very good time frame if it takes a long time for them to spawn. The one thing you don't want on four kings is multiple spawning at once. But uh, if they do, you can survive it for a little bit of time. It just makes it more dangerous. Especially if you're killing a king and it's fading out and it's blocking you from seeing one that's approaching because it can attack through the fog that happens when it dies, and then you won't be able to see the attack. So you got to be pretty aware. Um, here we're just baiting out the combos. Just kind of rolling through them, and he's dead. That's a pretty simple fight. Um, there will be an example of the purple magic attack in that zero damage run I'm going to be linking in the description and in the video as well. Uh, the fight on that's way scarier. Uh, it's a perfect example of how to do it in like the worst scenario. And uh, now we're out of there. We're on to Seath now, so we're going to level up to 30 strength, and we're going to do 30... 38 dexterity, 22 endurance. Again, it doesn't matter if these are exact... You want to be aiming to get 40 dexterity in the end, close to whatever amount of strength you can get in, in at, at tier dexterity, so maybe close to 40 strength if you can, but don't worry too much. And then as much endurance as you prefer. Uh, I'd say 20 for the run is perfect, but like you don't even need that. Just for precaution, if you uh, want it for running through areas. So we're going through Orlando now. We're going all the way over to Duke's Archives. I'm going to speed this part up a little bit because it's pretty boring just running through here. And uh, for Duke's Archives, we arrive at the door, and we're going to kill this boar right here. Now, this hammer is really good on the boar. It kills it in about three hits, I believe. Um, I wouldn't use the Crystal Halberd on these guys. It's very weak. So we're trying to just kind of go go mid-hallway and pull him back to the, uh, the entrance. Uh, reason we're trying to be very careful with how soon we turn is because he's really quick, and he will catch up to me um, if I screw this up. Now, you could shoot him with a bow if you wanted. That'd be smarter. I'm kind of just being weird and doing it this way. I would recommend shooting him with a bow if you can. But you've got the head start on him. Uh, he just kind of almost gets us, but not really. And then uh, we're waiting for him to attack, and then we're attacking with an R2 attack. And you'll see that does like half of his, more than half of his health. So if you do the heavy attack like I did right there, that jumping one, uh, that will take most of his health right away. And then you can kill him in two hits instead. But if you want to be safer, you can do the R1. It's less commitment. There you go. He's dead. Uh, this next one is a little bit interesting. So the ring setup you're going to want to be ro rolling with through here is the Slumbering Dragon Crest ring and the Flip ring. And you're going to notice when I go through the hallway here too. Uh, so see how I'm kind of crossing over the midpoint to the further the right side? There's a line I'm following on the floor right here. The reason is if I'm over this line by too much, if I'm in this area, he can prematurely turn the corner or attack without me actually being fully visible yet because the enemy can kind of detect me from this range. So if I'm on this line, it's much safer. And then just kind of sneak around right here. Sometimes he'll turn and he'll face you immediately. Other times he'll, uh, he'll wait until you're right beside him and then attack, but just get ready to roll if he takes off in this direction like towards the end of the hallway and not into this this open area but like the opposite way that he's facing because if he takes off the back legs can stagger you and then what we do is we kill this guy right now by just going over here so we can access the uh the lift so he attacked right there i attack in return and then we're just waiting out another one uh, i would never recommend attacking him when he's running like this you'll get hit by doing that because that's that counts as the charge attack um when you're normally in the open so he's doing damage by doing that right now i wouldn't recommend doing anything until he stops or does like a headbutt sometimes it's just a waiting game you don't have to necessarily like be super close to him but i try to get close to bait different attacks um ultimately i think if you wait you'll be fine but i got him to do the double head swipe did another attack and he's dead Switching back to the Crystal Halberd, and then our ring setup um, is the Fog Ring and the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring, exactly like we had it on Nido. Uh, the reason for doing that is so that we can set up our, our position safely here and not be detected from uh, like visual or sound or anything. And then we're going to get the bow ready, and we're going to aim for this golem right here. 
And then when I know that I've got the spot that I want, I switch my ring off from the slumbering dragon crest to the flip ring so the enemies can hear sound. And now this strategy is basically making them go towards wherever the sound is coming from, from my arrows. And you notice I'm not actually shooting the golem, I'm shooting an invisible boundary beside him. You can actually hit the golem if you want to, it doesn't matter. Just roughly in that area, and they'll pile up over there, because they can't see me, but they can hear this sound cue. So they want to know what that is. And um, what this is going to do is it's going to make it possible to run all the way through the stairs without them actually being able to attack you immediately. They'll have to turn around to be able to do anything. And by the time you get there, it's pretty safe. So... Uh, just kind of queue up enough arrows over there to get them all bundled and then switch your um, or keep your rings the way they are. Make sure you have that flip ring on. Go along the left side of the staircase. Just flip through there. If this Chandler is, is queuing up an attack like he just did at the bottom of the stairs here, but when you're at the top, get ready to prioritize dodging his attack. Don't even care about these guys on the right side. They're way less important. There's, there's almost no chance they're going to be able to connect to you as long as you're moving fast if you're sprinting. But make sure you prioritize the Chandler shooting at you, because if you pay too much attention to these guys on the right, he'll hit you when you don't expect it, because he will shoot sometimes. Uh, there's some some random scenarios there. This guy, we want to go around the outside of the pillars. Um, he'll try to do like a, sh like a shoulder check or a jump attack really quickly sometimes, so just pay attention to him. Flip through there, or run if you can. Listen to the Chandler to make sure he's not shooting like right when you pop up on that side, because sometimes you can get hit in that area between right here, but a lot of the time it's super safe. You can hear him shooting a projectile, just wait like an extra second if you can. And then you just run straight through here. Uh, these guys will all miss because they're too slow. Uh, and then we hit this lever and we go in. I go beside the lever and I kind of just roll into the corner here to be safe. Um, but this is a part of the game coming up now where we're going to take a scripted death that's developer intended. Now you can skip this. If you want to learn the Duke skip, you could do it if you want. Uh, with the way that everyone plays these runs and plays deathless runs, typically it's allowed to die to this boss. Um, because it was intended by the developers when it was made. If you want to learn how to do the Duke skip, uh, I have a zero damage run that I've been talking about the entire video. It's going to be linked in the description it, and in the video. It has the Duke skip in it. Um, there's tutorials online for it as well if you really want to learn it, but you don't have to do that in my opinion. It's just something that uh, if, you, if you prefer, you can do it this way. If you pr prefer that way, it's harder, but go for it. Um, so we're submitting our life to see to be brought to a mandatory area, which is a jail cell that we escape from, and then we can actually kill the boss when we get out of there. If you played the game normally, you'll notice he, he, this guy is inv invincible when you first get um, to this encounter because you can't actually break the crystal that stops him from being invincible from this area. So I'm shooting him with the bow to show everybody. His health will replenish immediately. There's no way to actually kill him. He, he's just supposed to kill you. That's it. And then uh, what we do is we put on some armor to not get cursed here because we don't want to have our health lower overall. Um, we're, we're okay with dying here, but we don't want to actually have a curse if we can help it. So just let him hit you with that big attack. I'd, I'd stay away from the smaller crystals because it's a little bit easier. Um, and then you get brought to this uh, this mandatory area, this jail cell, and you break out of this, um, this, this part of the game. So this part's pretty straightforward. If you played it before, you just hit the snake through the cell. It gives you the key. And then we homeward bone immediately so that the, uh, the alarm system turns off in the jail. And what that does is it sets up the squid billy things with the squid kids and they'll chase you. Um, but with the way we did it now, uh, they should all just be at the bottom, I believe. I don't think they're going to be chasing me. Yeah, they're all collected in the room down there. So the homeward bone resets them and makes them just chill at the bottom. And we're just heading down here. We're getting to this, uh, this ladder. Before we actually go up the ladder, there's something we need to do. We're going to get the bow out. We're going to back all the way over here. We're going to look up with the uh, the bow. And we're going to try to make one of these enemies go to the ladder here. Now, this guy, he sees the arrow. He hears it. We're waiting. We're hoping he slides down the ladder so we can kill him before going up because it's much safer to do that. Now, because he's not actually noticing it... Uh, there's the alternate option of climbing up the ladder and sliding back down, but I think I'm going to shoot it again because I have more arrows. It's much safer doing it this way. Sometimes they're just really derpy and they don't care, though. Now, like, 
normally if you didn't want to do it this way you could just run up the ladder immediately and then slide back down when you're at the top so you can get the attention from this guy and he'll slide down after you as long as you're quick you won't have him land on you or anything but there is a catch though every enemy that goes down this ladder bounces off the ground and the bounce uh, it basically accounts for like three staggers or something or two staggers so you have to let him bounce off the ground and do this weird thing first before you attack him or you will end the run so you see he did like a little mini bounce this the smaller enemies bounce even more and even higher in the air uh, it is some sort of glitch with the programming for it but you just don't don't even be near the bottom of the ladder if they land because it doesn't matter if they've already landed they'll still land again and again and again um, almost like it's like a little earthquake or something <laughs> so um yep he's dead we pulled one one enemy individually it's the regular man serpent then this smaller cobra right here shooting the projectiles so we're gonna wait for this cobra to run over here and not chance it by running into this area and you want the Cobra to go down the ladder too, if you want, or even this guy too. So I got impatient. I just wanted this guy to come down first. In the meantime, while the Cobra catches up, uh, it should be safe enough to kill this guy. We wait for him, we do our R2 attack. He's dead with, this, with another R1. We roll away or run away. And the Cobra still hasn't actually come to the ladder. You can, act, you can see them approaching the ladder by their shadows through the floor. So if you see like a, a little shadowy thing moving um, on the ceiling below the ladder, that's how you know they're approaching it. And because I didn't see that, I knew it was safe. Um, so we're waiting for him to shoot his projectiles. We get up there. He he dodges my attack here. That's really risky, what I did. But um, I guess I kind of wanted to fight him out here. But now I'm like, you know what? No, I'm going to back up and just be safer. So we're letting him come down the ladder in the end. And you'll see how much he bounces here. Watch. See that giant bounce? That's why you don't want to attack too soon. And uh, now we get the uh, key to escape the jail from this chest right here. And we're going to turn off the alarm as well. I think. Yes. character's like oh shit i forgot my keys man where are they okay apparently we're not turning off the alarm because it's already good <laughs> we're just gonna homeward bone and uh from this cell right here we're gonna set up red tier stone ring again because there's a chandler that we have to kill as the first enemy that we're gonna hit coming up soon to kill him in one hit we want red tier stone to be activated we also want this this hammer to be plus five now that we have the materials for us so make sure that your hammer is plus five at this point put the symbol of avarice back on and then we're just waiting again here so if anyone has any questions in chat while we're waiting for this uh let me know did i beat jump king i haven't beaten jump king i don't know if i'm gonna play it again we'll see <laughs> uh bleak so what's up how's it going speaks in python script <laughs> paid acting can you block in a no hit run so you can't block in a no hit run that's one thing that's against the rules Uh, again, the rules for this run, just to outline them before the end. No staggers or damage from any enemies. Uh, you can take fall damage. You can take damage from poison in water. Um, and there's no magic that I use in this run. There's no uh, save quits or glitches. That's pretty much it. And the scripted seeth death is allowed if you want it to be. You can skip it if you want, but it is a mandatory developer intended thing. So there's no problem with it. It's not like they give you another option. Uh, Cyclonic, it's going pretty good. How are you? Any modded runs anytime soon? Yeah, we're going to do Augur of Darkness on DS2 tomorrow, so. That should be fun. We'll probably crack out, like, just a little bit of it, though, because it's going to be uh, an earlier stream, and then I'm going to end around probably three or so. Why is magic not allowed? It, you can use magic if you want to. I just don't prefer it. Um, should you do a deathless run first? I would recommend deathless or soul level one before you do this kind of thing. But you could go right into this if you feel like you're ready for it. Hopefully the information in this helps. Can you see my stats? I can pause it the next time I get the stats. Um, I'm not actually playing the game right now, Fabian. This is a video where we're commentating a, uh, a video of mine that I had 
intended for a guide, so. This snake guy's gonna chase you pretty diligently. You wanna be quick off that ladder. Uh, this guy, I kind of just walk to the right, then strafe to the left for the arrows. The one in the corner is turning, so he doesn't jump at you, really. And then this is the Chandler right here that you're going to want to hit. So I have the I have the running attack on the Crystal Halberd ready for that. And it seems to work much better than the uh, Hammer, because, again, you can actually attack him from a further distance. So if he does a poke with his Trident, you're not going to trade with him. It's going to be a lot quicker. I killed this guy right here shooting arrows. Very important, because he can shoot you through the staircase here. And then I wait for another arrow to go by by this guy. If he's not shooting right when you turn the corner to this little uh, this little wheel right here to spin the stairs, uh, you don't actually have to wait. You can just go immediately. There's no arrow timing that will sync up with uh, you spinning the wheel for the stairs and then like getting hit right after it. It's, it's always just going to miss you. So the real threat is the guy that I killed before that staircase and then waiting out the one at the top. So we wait out this guy as well. Uh, this one right here at the end, you actually don't have to do this at all. Um, oh, wait, no, you do. Sorry. No, I'm wrong. Because that staircase is not rotated yet. Since this is different than the zero damage run. I got confused. In zero damage, you do duke skip, so you're fine. So let me explain this situation then. So you do have to kill that, that archer to the, the right so you can be safe here. We're waiting for this Chandler to do a magic attack that we can predict and we can roll off. The problem with the, the attack that he does right here is there's two different ones that look exactly the same, but they have different speeds. Um, so if you've gotten to this point and he hasn't launched the thing yet, it's going to be a longer attack. And then I want to roll right before it launches so it goes over my head. Then I can land safely and I'm good. Let's say he did the quicker attack though. Like right there for example, or right here. I can roll right through that off the ledge and still be fine. But if it's the longer one, you wanna go right before it launches, you don't wanna actually see it come out yet. Cause then there's a chance he might hit you with a quicker one when you get down there, uh, as far as I know at least. So, and then when we rotate the, the staircase thing, we, we kind of run it along this wall right here. And then um, you should get missed by any attack that he fires, it shouldn't track you, but you can always roll if you hear the sound. Uh, this looks really scary, but it's guaranteed if you're fast. So as soon as you hit this uh, this corridor here, maintain your speed right to the ladder. Don't stop running and then go down and hold the down button immediately. And the arrow will always go right over your head. There's different degrees of how close it will be, but it will never actually hit the character. Uh, you roll again right here so you don't get hit by an arrow out of the, uh, the ladder. It's pretty rare that you would be on that angle, but like if you go and get the, the safety bonfire around the corner, he could hit you before you pull the lever for that. On this, um, I recommend actually doing this a little bit differently. So before you pull the lever, put on the fog ring if you can with the flip ring. Um, so you can still move pretty well, but you're not as visible. And then when you pull this staircase down, uh, there's going to be an enemy around the corner below this part. He can actually jump attack you at the fog gate after you've cleared it. So if you have the fog ring, he won't be able to see you as soon. And then there's no way you can get hit right out of the fog gate. So I roll down here. I make it to the fog gate. And this is the part where it's dangerous. So he could have actually jumped and gotten me through there before I go off that uh, that plank. Or that, uh, that little ledge. So we're kind of just going through these guys. Pretty simple. And you notice at this point my ha my health is about half. Uh, that's perfect because when I want to set up Red Tier Stone Ring, I can do it really quickly over here. I believe I'm going to do exactly that. So we're going to fall roughly from this point, take a little bit of damage. So I didn't quite get the full RTSR setup. I'm probably still going to put on the symbol of Avarice to set it off. But you, I could have fallen from higher up if I calculated it properly and then just got right into Red Tier Stone Range. So depending on how much health you have coming up to that area, just keep that in mind. This guy, I like to bait attacks, then run by him. Particularly the jump attack is good, like this one. You can roll just like straight into him and then go around. This bridge right here, right around this area, the game will try to push you off of this and kill you. So don't go on this right side. 
if you have to, if you have no choice, run run like almost diagonally up the slant as you're going forward. And what will happen is it'll be pushing you, so it'll keep you center and you can move straight. This side doesn't have that problem, but the collision will literally just push you off right here. So just try to run against it by running slightly left if you're on this right side, or just don't even go there at all. Highly recommend that. Okay, and then we got escape right out of there. Put the symbol of avarice back on while we're running over to the clam so we can get that health set up. <laughs> Take bets on whether I get the run or not. <laughs> oh man. Oh chat. All right, so we have a uh, proper amount of health for Red Tear Stone Ring. I don't think I have the ring equipped though, so I gotta switch it. I think I noticed that right now, yeah. So I got it before it was too late. Um, and now for this part, there's a way better method that's in the zero damage run that I highly recommend for this area. Highly, highly recommend. Um, in fact, don't even do it this way. Like, I mean, I'll show you how to do it this way while killing the clams if you want to, but I, I recommend at this point that you go and open up that zero damage run and you check out how I do this part for the seat split on there, because it's so much better. So much better. Um, killing these clams isn't that big of a deal, but there's some risk in it that you don't need to, to take. Uh, there's a method very similar to um, the Anor Londo rafters with the uh, the Painting Guardians, and then also a combination of that and like the rings for Nito to stealth your way into the fight. So I do jump attacks on these guys from when they're pretty far away, so I can hit them perfectly as they, they roll up. They have a very quick uh, leg thrust attack, so you don't actually want to attack them close. You want to be attacking from further away so they can't quite do that attack. And you see, like, he has about five foot distance from me. That's when I go for it, so it's not possible for him to do that quick attack. This one's kind of already facing the other way, so I'd... these are all R2s, by the way. And um, again, good distance. Uh, there's a situation on the clams that'll happen where you'll land on their head and they will move their head and it'll look like the they kind of scooped you and lifted you up. That's not actually a stagger or anything. You can actually be on top of an enemy and be moved by them still. Uh, in the DLC, you'll notice on the zero damage run, Calamite will like swipe me and move the character. He won't actually stagger you, but he'll physically move you in on the spot because you're on top of their, uh, their, their limbs or whatever, or their character model. So don't, don't get worried about that. Uh, it's pretty common that'll happen. On Seath at the beginning, we shoot the arrow. So we can turn around and run back with the uh, the hammer pretty quickly and get some extra damage. And you you all know that when he gets um, the crystal broken, he gets staggered for a little bit. So he has to do this like intro animation or whatever. So now most, most of his health is already gone pretty easy. And what we're looking for is we're looking for two different attacks with crystals. So the one that he's doing right now because the way his head just moved is gonna be an arc around his body. If he moves his head straight up and down, it's gonna be uh, a pathway right in front of him where you would go to the uh, leg on the right-hand side to attack him and get away from the crystals. But you have so much damage because this hammer that it really, you won't even see the fight play out that much most of the time if you do it the way that I did. It's almost an insta-kill. And again, Symbol of Avarice to have more souls after uh, the boss is dead, always, if you can manage it. And uh, now here we're going to Bed of Chaos. Before we do so, we need to make sure we have 30 humanities, so you might remember Patches from the Catacombs. He's going to sell us some extra humanities we need to get that number. Uh, there's also a firekeeper soul we picked up earlier on in the church by that big uh, that big knight with the mace. That'll help us out with five humanities right there as well. Uh, so I buy all the ones he has available, and then I'm going to check my inventory just to make sure. So we're going to look through this. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm like fumbling. I'm probably talking to chat or whatever. Um, I'm going to level up a little bit more. So we got 40 decks. Uh, we're going to use 18 humanities, we already have one, that makes 19, and then we're going to use the three twin humanities, that's six, so we're going to have 25. 
and then that Firekeeper soul we have left over will get us the last bit of uh, humanities. For whatever reason, if you don't have this many humanities by this point of the game, my recommendation would be kicking Patches off the ledge after you've bought every humanity from him. He'll give you an extra four, I believe. You should have enough humanities at this point if you played the run properly and you didn't waste them or die with them. But if you need more Patches is the easiest way. Just make sure you kick him and you don't hit him. Uh, your hammer probably would be strong enough to kill him, but I just I still recommend pushing him off. And uh, we're just we're gonna be making our way back to Blight Town like we did the first time again. So there's gonna be some similarities there. Nothing too bad to worry about for the next minute or so. So I can read chat again. Uh, Garibo, not too much. I'm doing a guide for DS1. What's going on, man? You have to quit out after killing Patches by kicking him. You can quit out after. You can homeward bone, and then he'll uh, have his items there in his default position. Uh, this will be on YouTube, it will, yeah. It'll be in the guides playlist. And again, I apologize for the quality. I, my computer wasn't really as good um, at the time that I did this run, so the video quality might not be as good as the stuff right from the stream, unfortunately since this was an older setup I was running, but I hope the ideas are good enough to uh, to translate. So again, Blight Town like we did the first time, down the first ladder, jump off the second. You could jump off the third if you wanted to, or go down it. Let me just roll. And uh, we roll down here. And you'll see me blocking a lot in this run. The reason I'm blocking when I'm running near cliffs or ledges is because the game has this thing called uh, stored rolls. What stored rolls do is um, if you do an animation like rolling when you land, but it doesn't go through, uh, you can commit another action and then have it happen after that following action or up to like, you know, a solid like handful of seconds later, it'll just roll randomly. So when you block, it actually cancels any stored things that are buffered. Um, and there, therefore you can't roll off the ledge when you don't want to if you spam the button when you landed. So it's very safe to block after spamming the button from landing. It's the most um, prevalent situation where you're going to actually roll multiple times, right? So, uh, But you do want to spam when you fall, so you can have quicker recovery time and have a higher chance of it actually working. Uh, there's a good question in chat, so um, LaVivid was asking, what's the point of having 30 humanities? So having 30 humanities allows you to open the shortcut to Beta Chaos um, by offering the humanities to the Chaos Servants, which means you don't have to do Centipede Demon, you don't have to do Fire Sage, purely just any percent, just the mandatory bosses. Uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to open a door that is to the right-hand side of Fire Sage, if anyone remembers that. So that's what we're going to do right here. If you have the original version of the game, it's going to take a lot longer to offer these. One benefit of the remaster in this run is uh, you can you can consume stacked items of the same kind all at once, and you can offer them all at once. So I don't have to wait and offer each individual humanity and spend like five minutes. So this will be pretty quick. We're going to say yes to this guy to join the Covenant. Um, if you say no to him, you have to run all the way back from like another bonfire or you can quit out the game if you're practicing. Just make sure in the real run, if you don't do quit outs, don't say no to him. It's really frustrating. Um, and we're going to join the Covenant. Make sure you do not kill this enemy. Do Whatever you do, do not kill this enemy or there's no way you're going to be able to do it this way then. Um, offer all the humanity. And now we have our door open that we need, and we're going to head over there right now. I'm just going to sit down really quickly. Uh, the way you'll know that it works is if you gave 30 humanities, you'll get the Chaos Firestorm Pyromancy. That's always going to happen. That means you're at the highest rank of the Covenant that you can get. Coming back down through this area where uh, Ceaseless was, because the lava's all drained, we can go down here. Um, because we homeward boned on Ceaseless, the cutscene sometimes cues when you come back to this area, so you might see that happen randomly. 
but I think I homeward boned pretty late earlier. I don't know if I don't know if you if I couldn't catch to see if the cutscene popped back up, but don't freak out about that. That's fine. We're just gonna go down here, and then we're on our way to the shortcut. Uh, in a damageless run, you can't take damage from anything. Copras is different than this run, so uh, there's no lava damage allowed. But in both runs, any percent. Um, well, actually, both runs hitless and damageless. You still don't take damage from lava uh, when it's when it comes to any percent, at least. Uh, the reason you don't take damage from lava in this run is because you don't need to. I mean, you're allowed to if you want to. Um, especially if you did centipede, if you did all boss no hits on this, for example, you would actually take lava damage in the run. Because it'd be smarter to run the bed of chaos um, from that way. You wouldn't need the shortcut, right? But in this run, because we're not doing centipede demon, there's no point of actually going into the lava uh, and taking that pathway because we have this other pathway unlocked now. So over here, we're trying to dodge around this Taurus Demon. There's a couple of things he can do. This is a little bit of a hard scenario because you have the Centipede on the right. You have the Taurus Demon in front of you. Uh, he'll jump and you can go through his legs. I could have ran more left and just went like underneath his uh, his legs. That's fine. If he does a, a, like a swipe attack or whatever, he can have a very delayed sweeping attack. Uh, some other ones as well. You're just going to have to be good at dodging them. And make sure you're moving consistently because the Centipede can hit you from off screen as well as you're going through there. Um, but... Yeah, whenever he jumps, definitely try to get under his legs if you can, or just around him. Be very quick. And this is the shortcut that we just have opened from offering the 30 humanities, so no lava you need to go through. Pretty quick pathway to get to uh, Bed of Chaos. There is one catch, though. There's a Titanite Demon that's on this bridge coming up. And uh, what you're going to want to do for the Titanite Demon is uh, get him to the very end of the bridge so that he can only really just do range attacks. And as soon as he shoots one of the projectiles, he can run around him. That's the easiest and safest way to do it, in my opinion. If you feel crazy, you could try to kill him. I wouldn't recommend it. Or you could try to go around him immediately. It usually doesn't work out too well, though. Um, you'll also see I'm clearing out the debris right here of these... Uh, these uh, twigs and branches because it's going to block you from running around him if he does uh, the projectile attack and you want to leave sooner than normal. Uh, it also might get you stuck when you're running away as well. So we're kind of just walking him all the way back over here. You can do this quicker by going closer to him and making him jump over and over. Uh, remember the jump attack on this enemy is ridiculous. Like the hitbox is huge. So make sure you're, you have a lot of space if he's jumping. And don't go like near him. Don't roll into him when he jumps or beside him. Just roll like right away. Um, and you can already see that projectile he's shooting. He's doing another one right here. That's the attack we're going to go around him on, but we just need him to go to the back of this bridge. waiting for him to get over here again he's just going to keep crawling closer and closer and uh, he can still move further forward than this and you might even see him do a jump right here will he do it let's see he might just crawl right to me and as soon as you see him light up with that I'll almost kind of already be ready to go by him You'll see I'm kind of, t I'm testing the water. I'm doing circles right here, getting ready for it, anticipating it. But at any point he could do the jump attack. So you gotta be careful of that as well. So staying at a medium distance, waiting for him to, to cue the right attack. And then now you can see I already predicted it. So I'm rolling through. And if you can get through him and you can be beside him when he's launching it, then you're safe. If he's already launched it and you're running by him, it's too late. Don't don't go for it then, back, back away. That's how you know. Um, Sergeant Blackwood, thank you for gifting Salty Fish a sub. I appreciate that. 
Um, also, one thing to mention when you're running away from this guy, he can still shoot projectiles at you from behind, so look back at him always when you're going through this bridge. Don't look the other way. It's not worth it. Uh, here, okay, this is actually interesting. This is a small detail, but you can, it, sometimes it's very difficult to actually run on this part of the ground. Uh, it'll just like kind of get you stuck. So I go to the thin part on the left side and then I turn into it. If you see right here, see how I kind of swivel? Uh, now you should be able to run up the part where the root is, where my hammer is right here, but it just sometimes doesn't work. So I kind of go and I do like a little turn into it right here. Um, and that keeps it a little safer because if you get trapped and you think you can run up there, then that guy with the flamethrower might kill you. Uh, this dude right here, he can do a bunch of different attacks. The one that's the most dangerous is the flame whip because it'll actually hit you the soonest out of anything. And it's like point blank. So uh, here he does the firestorm. It's not the chaos whip, but let's say he did the chaos fire whip. Uh, you're going to want to roll immediately. Like as soon as you get to him, you're going to want to roll. This one, I don't have to. I can just go around and he'll miss all the time with any other attack. As long as you're moving really well. Um... He might also approach you at the fog gate here and make you nervous by attacking through the fog gate. It won't hit you though, you just have to just chill. I'd, I'd say take a couple steps away from the wall, but you'll be fine. And uh, if you're ready to go, just go right in the fight. You'll notice I have six firebombs ready. We're gonna use two of those firebombs for the cheese on Beta Chaos. This is a trick to kill it really speedy. Um, also not a glitch, but just very clever uh, and just the preferred way to do this. And you'll notice I have a bow on my offhand from the hammer to uh, line up the firebombs on this as well. Now we're going to go right into here to this line. We're going to wait for him to swipe twice, or sorry, her to swipe twice. Political correctness. And then we're going to go back six squares. So you can see my character's left foot is on the sixth square right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to turn around. Going to be facing towards him within the six squares. And then we're going to look back at this branch on the right side after I switch my rings around. So you can see I put on the fap ring here. The reason I did that, the flip ring on this fight when you're trying to get into the um, the cave where the bug is to kill the boss, um, it rebounds you off the branches and keeps you on the spot so you don't move as fluidly through there. So having flip ring off in general is already good, but then this ring gives you more endurance. So we have more rolls we can go through that cave. We could be even quicker. So if you have the fap ring, you can use it at this point. Otherwise, just don't have Darkwood Grain Ring on. You're fine. Same thing. Uh, we're going to set up with these branches here. You can see there's these two prominent ones you can notice uh, sweeping down in the forefront. There's like this big arm and there's like these two branches here. There's some darker spots. That's how I remember them usually. Uh, and this one has a little bit of like a, a peak to it. Like you can see right here, there's a crevice or like a little, like an apex almost. And you kind of go right where that peak is with uh, your aim right above where the branch is or, or like almost right on the branch and then from there you're gonna throw the firebomb so one more time i'm gonna just show you this again really slowly so you're aiming right around here and then you're gonna throw and then you noticed as soon as I threw the firebomb, this is one trick that makes this way easier than the way I see a lot of people do it, is I already have moved the center of the camera without actually aiming to almost kind of be like preemptively in the area where I'm going to aim so that I have less movement to do, which makes it easier and way quicker. So uh, if I do screw up um, or let's say I take more time to adjust it, I have more time. So I've already moved the, the general camera all, all the way in this direction, right as I've tossed the firebomb. Uh, that one activates with the cutscene, and you can see I'm already on the proper spot we need to be for the next one. I just move it up a little bit, and the proper spot for the one after this is this second branch right above this one coming out in the middle. You can have it as high as the crosshair being right here, all the way to like right where the bottom of it is, that's fine. As long as you're roughly in the middle of this region, you're good. And that's the next one. And because uh, again, like if you notice, so let's let's just go back a bit on this. So I throw this one again. I've already turned the camera as soon as that leaves and I'm already on that spot. Now you might not be that quick. Maybe you only rotated it a little bit and you haven't aimed yet. You can still aim after the cutscene and have more time, but if you've just generally adjusted it, think of the center point of your screen and looking in that direction and where the where the uh, the crosshair is gonna appear when you aim and trying to get as close to that general area as you can before you actually aim while well, you have that extra time. And that's that makes it so much easier. And then you're good. Uh, we're gonna run to the safe spot right here. Uh, there's a little branch on the ground, you'll notice. Right here, this branch, run behind it. 
take out the hammer two hand. Um, and okay, so on Beta Chaos, we're waiting for a particular attack. In this video, she does the attack immediately. There's an alternate attack she does that doesn't look like this animation where you wait it out and there's fire behind you, and that's why you go in the safe spot. But this is the attack we need to punish, so or or, or bait out, I guess. So this one right here, the whole body rises up immediately very quickly. It's not as gradual as the other animation, which you'll see in the zero damage run that I will link in the video again for other examples. Uh, and we're going to turn around, but we don't go right away. You'll notice, like, I notice this right away, but I don't go immediately. I wait for it to rise up, and then as soon as it's off the screen a little bit, then I turn the camera, then I start jogging. I'm not running. The run, the run button's not being held at all. We're just jogging. The reason that you want to be slower on this is so it tracks you further back. By the time you get to the point, um, the furthest point you can possibly walk on this bridge, you still have space left, and the game hasn't placed fire ahead of you. It's only placed it behind you. So you can see, there's nothing to worry about. I have a lot of space to work with because I, I was slower with it instead of rushing to that spot immediately. And the tracking is in my favor, so it goes all behind me. Then I roll, run right back up, go through all these branches, uh, and then I just hit the bug and it's over. That's pretty much it. Uh, and now we're heading to Gwyn, and this is going to be the end of the guide coming up pretty soon. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it so far and gotten some good information if there's any extra questions that you have um, for whatever reason instead of putting them in the comments of the youtube videos i recommend come and check out the stream and just ask questions in the stream when i'm playing the games and i can answer them for you um, or recommend like other things from runs whatever and i heavily recommend you check out the damageless run that i recently did for more updated strats that can help you in this as well because um this was done a little bit more in the past so it's not as updated but it's still very good it's still very safe and we're gonna go to framped here again drop through the hole to the altar and after we offer all those souls the door will open for Gwyn, we're going to be using the Crystal Halberd, and at this point of the game, you're going to want to have that 40 dex at least. Strength isn't as important anymore because we're not using the hammer, but 40 dex is good. If you can get 40 strength as well, do it. Uh, and endurance-wise, I'd say 20 is perfect. You don't really need any endurance. You could not level at the entire game, but it helps a little bit to have extra if you're newer to this. Uh, having more than 20 is fine as well, as long as you're not having um, too much sacrifice on your dexterity or your strength, so... You should be good. I think I'm just talking to chat at this point. Let's see. So I'm leveling up strength a little bit more at the end here, I think. Am I? I'm debating it, I think. So this is roughly what your stats should look like at the end of the game. Something around this. You want that 40 dex, 100%. Endurance and strength can be a little bit freestyle. Um, having at least that 30 strength helps a little bit on Four Kings, the boss that we did earlier, and on uh, Seath. So apparently I put 42 decks in, and then I go for um, the symbol of avarice to reduce the health again, put on the darkwood grain ring, and then uh, got the red tear stone ring on as well. Now you'll notice actually, so for a lot of the game I had the darkwood grain ring on the other slot of my inventory, but right here though, you'll notice that I put it on um, the, uh, the other side. So see how I switch it around? Uh, the reason for that is when I enter the Gwyn Fog Gate, you don't want to have Darkwood Grain Ring on with the strategy I'm going to be using on Gwyn. So on the Fog Gate, I'm going to switch the ring on the out outermost side, which is the Darkwood Grain Ring, to the Hornet Ring, and I'll point that out again. That's very important. Hornet Ring is going to give you more critical damage on Gwyn. It's only used on that fight. That's the only boss you can parry and repost. That's it. Uh, and we're going to go over here to this uh, second little uh, mound of ash right here, and we're going to fall down it while having the Symbol of Avarice on so we can drain our health really, really quickly to get that red tear stone damage and uh this is the best way i found to do this very fast if you uh kind of keep it a little bit low key over here and don't go too far out the enemies won't see you it's pretty good you should fall down maybe like three times four times you're good uh and then this way you don't have to have the helmet on while you're running over you already have the red tear stone set up really easily and uh then you're you're good to go take a really wide uh right hand uh pathway around this first dude he can't even catch up fall off this ledge uh this next dude right here is a little scary he will actually do some attacks that are pretty fast so try to keep a little bit more of like a right lead on him if you can and expect for him to attack pretty quickly 
Uh, these guys are going to have to learn the move sets of uh, while you're running through. I wouldn't say you have to be experts at killing them, just like typically the attacks they'll do when they approach you. Uh, and try to keep a decent speed because you are being chased right here. Um, what I like to do on this part is not actually required, but it is something that I per personally prefer. I parry this enemy coming up right here. Now, let's say you don't want to parry him. So you're going to go and make a uh, counterclockwise turn around this pillar and just go in a circle. And he'll chase you, and if you can see him on the other side of the pillar and you know he's chased you, you can just run through straight and you're fine. Just do a circle right here, turn around left. And there is enough time, if you've been quick enough, those enemies behind you will not catch you. But here I like to parry, so I go for the parry, and I just run away because I'm rude. Good question in chat, why don't I use the Black Knight Halberd? It's a uh, 1 in 6 chance to drop at best for the early game, not really going to be guaranteed every run, not consistent for the strats. So we're just dodging these guys really quick before we go in here, and then you'll notice I do switch that Darkwood Grand Ring for the Hornet Ring. I have it on the outside of the rings to make it easier. I roll immediately after the Fog Gate is entered, just in case, and I'm running into Gwyn. The trick with parrying Gwyn is you want to be as close to him as you possibly can, but you almost want him to land on your head. So run in as if he's landing on you, and then when he's right above you about at this point, you see I start the parry, and then I get it. So I'll put this in slow motion for you, actually. So I'm sprinting, I'm sprinting. I'm still sprinting, and then I stop sprinting for a second to do the parry. And it's right before it hits me. Right before he actually lands on the ground, in fact. When his feet are still not touching the ground, that's when you want to start. The sword should be coming around the side, but you should already be in the parry animation. There you go, and you're good. That's the first parry. Um, you can repose Gwyn immediately just with the R1 after this. You don't have to two-hand or anything. Takes out a lot of his health. We're in a circle around him here. This is really important, actually. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a situation where he has to uh, turn around and attack me because the game still thinks that I'm behind him. Uh, and I'm doing it so quickly that he gets confused. And what this does is it resets the, um, the choice he makes in his attack to be another attack that's in my favor that I can parry again. And we were, we're trying to get medium range attacks and the, the opening attacks. Nothing else, no quick attack, no, no kicks, no grabs, just specifically attacks we can parry. So I go um, up to him and I wait for him to fully stand up on this angle and then I roll back three times. He attacks, he misses because he thinks I'm still there. I wait for a second, then I start walking back towards him. He does a medium range attack, I parry it. All the medium range attack parries are almost similar timing. They're not that hard to do. They're easier than the intro attacks. And then I back up again, rotate around him two hand, and then I, I won. So if you have a lot of damage at this point, you're pretty much gonna only have to parry him twice. That's way easier than damage list, way easier than SL1. And you've done it. Congratulations. Now, if you look like the character and are all pruny and stuff like that by the end of the run in Hollowed, I won't blame you because I think that's going to happen to you. Just a warning. Consult your doctor before you do this run. Uh, and my playtime for this is 2.11. It's a little slow. You can do this run in about an hour 40 or so. Um, I did waste some extra time on certain things, but there is ways to play it quicker. But not too bad. Um, and again, I'm going to address the most popular questions again about this before we finish. So if you didn't hear it at the beginning of the video, you do now. Uh, if you want save files, save file organizer uh, from speedsouls.com on PC or use the PlayStation Cloud service and back up your, your, your profile on there and keep loading in those, those 10 character slots you get. If you want to practice different areas of the game, just get them to different points and use the cloud. Use a USB drive on PS4 if you can or Xbox and you can, you can load that. As a profile, you can even take that and put it in your computer and then put the file from the console on your computer folder and store a bunch of them and just rotate them. Um, again, if you have any other questions about this run and it's not provided in the zero damage run or in for any of the guides for that matter, come join me um, in the stream, which is linked in the, the description. And uh, you can ask me live if you want to. And hopefully that helped you with uh, no hitting DS1. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you. That's pretty much the, the guide. Okay, we did it. Nice.